All present and accounted for. Good. As you will have heard, the Ark is ready. All that remains is to board and be on your way. Oh, I've seen my fair share of tight schedules, but this was bloody murder. But we did it. We finished the ship. It's safe, fit for purpose, and looks good to boot. Aye, it's a garland through and through. I really don't know what we'd do without you. Thank you. For everything. Ah, oh, don't mention it. Ever since that episode with Omega, I've been toying with the idea of star-faring vessels. And as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. We've learned a lot, let me tell you. In case you're wondering about payment, the ongoing existence of the world ought to do. But feel free to throw in a colorful recounting of your journey on your return. So, have you thought of a name? A name? Wasn't everyone just calling it Father's teeny tiny toy boat? Well, seeing as its purpose has changed, I thought a more eloquent name was in order. I suggested as much to Fortuno, who seemed quite amenable to the idea. <clears throat> Are you gonna name it the Enterprise, Sid? As you know, this vessel is the culmination of heretofore unprecedented collaboration. You already had an Enterprise. And though said collaboration is owed to the Scions, there is another whose noble deeds made our work possible. From a fragment of Dalamud, we obtained not only advanced materials such as refined adamantite, but the knowledge to traverse the stars. And this fragment would not have found its way to us had the Archon Luiswa not fought to protect this world, and in so doing, laid down his life. Now that the vessel stands complete, I cannot help but wonder if it was more than mere happenstance. If it was my father's intention to guide us here. In the hopes that his guidance will see you all safely home, I name the vessel after that self-same fragment of Dalamud he delivered unto us. The Starship Ragnarok. Sorry for the wait. I got everyone you asked for, and not a one less. What are you all doing here? <laughs> oh, I invited them. The representatives of those tribes with religious inclinations. You've done a fine job of readying the Ragnarok, but for it to take flight, we'll of course need the power of the Mother Crystal. Given its immense size, however, transporting it would be an absolute logistical nightmare, not to mention we'd need to shatter it into tiny shards for feeding to the engines. But, a brilliant idea came to me. We convert the crystal's energy into forms that can transport themselves! <sighs> Thou wouldst employ summoning, or should I say its precursor, creation magics. Care to explain for our benefit? As you may have witnessed at Bestway's Burrow, the Loperids are capable of creation magics, which they use to shape the moon's environment. Yet simple though they make it seem, tis a highly advanced and exacting art. 
To perform it correctly requireth that the wielder holdeth the object in his mind's eye in clearest detail. Hence the ancient's meticulous management of concepts. Drawing upon this art, the Asians conceived of summoning as we know it, a derivative that replaceth the complexity of concepts with the simplicity of zealotry to make manifest a creation. I see. By combining the Loperit's magics and the tribe's faith, we convert the Mother Crystal into primals of purer form and greater obedience. Summoning as it was intended, one might say. Indeed! Indeed! While Hydaelyn gave us the ability to use creation magics, she forbade us from using it to make anything possessed of a soul, or similar. She didn't say anything about fulfilling the desires of others, though. So, borrowing our friend's faith, we'll create deities using the Mother Crystal's power and send them to the Ragnarok! Am I the only one here concerned about the risk <laughs> of being turned into a tempered minion? Right. Oh, right. I was getting to that. From what I've read in Charlian tomes, it appears the Asians incorporated an additional nasty element into their summoning method. The fervent desire to assimilate others into one's belief. Beings thus created are instilled with the self-same desire and use their powers to enthrall people, starting with the summoner. In contrast, our creation magics, the original and the best, except no substitutes, don't incorporate any of that rubbish, so there's no risk of tempering. I mean, if the being was on the scale of Zodiac, you might feel a little tug, but I think we'll be safe enough. Truth be told, I do not understand the intricacies of this plan. But none of us would ever turn our backs on you. When the avatars of our faith ran amok, you intervened without decrying we who birthed them. Where others vilified and suppressed us, you offered understanding and friendship. In gratitude, we will share with you the true expressions of our gods. Not malevolent deities, but benevolent saviors. Hmm. Alright you lot, we're heading to Tomorrow. the ethereal sea. Stay in sight, else you're liable to get lost. Lead the way! So, pri re Primal Redemption Arc? A moment in anticipation of the day man might journey to the stars we developed these portable teleportation devices one for each of you designed to work in tandem press the button on one and in a matter of moments all eight will activate and send their owners back to the Ragnarok So beam me up. There is no telling what hazards you may encounter. If you find yourself separated or lost, please do not hesitate to use them. Beam me up, Scotty. Be safe, all of you, and come back. You as well. I pray you take care. Looks like everything is in order. So I'll go ahead and board. A few of my fellows will remain to assist with the summonings, but rest assured, the vessel won't want for competent crewing. If you are ready, then you should board as well. Go, and Godspeed. I'm super ready. I'm ultra ready. This is gonna go fine. 
this is really fun. I think this is really fun. Okay, this is the same things they already sent. We've already been over all that stuff. So we are good. To the bridge. All right. Here we go. I don't know what's gonna wait. I'll try to keep the hope alive throughout this. They're so cool. Aren't they so cool? Oh yeah, there's our pilot. Welcome to the bridge, everyone. I hope you have everything because I can't be bothered turning back. Right then, make yourselves comfortable. We're setting off in just a moment. It's incredible. This is Fortuno. Can you hear me? The preparations for the summonings are complete. In accordance with the 14th phase of the plan, we have moved the Ragnarok to the launch site. The gates are open. You may depart when ready. So, are we ready? As ready as we'll ever be. Let's get going. Oh, come on. That star's got more fire in its belly! Try it again! With feeling! <laughs> <clears throat> I will issue the command to launch. Of course.
We're in space. That's so Still cool. in one piece? Good. Sleeping way? Report. <laughs> All's well. Fantastic, even. Oh, he's awake. That's good. Thanks to the power of those primals, the engines are roaring and we're ripping along. All values are also within projected ranges. Time to destination is eight carats. Perhaps seven at a pinch. Eight carats. All right. Let's go over some points of caution. Our destination, as you know, is Ultima Thule. Lest you wonder, the place is not a star so much as a patch of emptiness. That's the extent of what our equipment could determine, anyway. From what we know of Meteon, she's likely used Dynamis to obfuscate her location. So, in conclusion, we'll only know what's there when we get there. see to it the ship's ready to take off at a moment's notice. We'll support the search as best we can, but it'll be your paws on the ground, assuming there is any. But everything will be fine, I'm sure. Heidelin believes in you, so you ought to believe in yourselves. Just don't do anything I wouldn't. Like waiting too long to use those portable teleporters of yours. Personally, at the slightest sign of trouble, I'd mash the button to bits. And you should as well. Understood. We promise to be careful. Just you brace yourselves. We're about to arrive and the vessel will shake a good bit. Hmm. What is this? Something is oh, interfering with the equipment. Greetings. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Greetings. Can you hear me? Meteon. So this is Meteon. Oh. Have you met one of my sisters? I don't remember meeting you myself. But I do know that you're from Atheris. Why have you come? All you had to do was wait. I would have delivered to you your ends. We didn't ask for that. I don't understand. All life is destined to end. Why choose to prolong your suffering? Effort, ambition, love, they amount to naught. Happiness, should you find it, is inevitably lost, stolen away by events beyond your control. There is no logic nor meaning in it. You think there is, 
convince yourselves. But it's all a cruel accident. Come now. I speak the truth. A truth you would recognize if you looked up at the night sky. Unbroken emptiness. Cold, dark, and silent. Your world, like every other, is but a blemish upon its perfect fabric. Life is an anomaly. It is unnatural and cannot continue. The sooner you accept this, the easier it will be. Just to be clear, we're not here to argue with you. We know that life is fleeting, and that in the short time we have it, we're not assured happiness. Indeed. I've seen far more sorrow in the eyes of many I've met. I myself have plenty of regrets, and one day they'll die with me gone to dust with my good deeds and unfulfilled dreams. But we accept this. That our existence may seem pointless. That sorrow, rage and despair will always dog our heels. And we press on regardless. That is why Hydlin guided us here. In her boundless love for mankind, she has prepared us for this trial. And in her name, we have come for you. Yes, I sense it. A burning passion like unto fury. I know it well. For the same passion once burned in many a star before yours. Suffocated and extinguished now. I... I can't breathe! You approach the bounds of my ultimatum. Where emotions dictate reality. Where resignation and acceptance unite to embrace the end. Where those who yet valiantly cling to life cannot thrive. Tancred? Oh no. Meteon is gone as well. Mayhap he awakened first and gave chase. Uh, everyone? It appears we are at our destination. This, this is Ultima Thule. Not that we knew what to expect, but I wasn't expecting this. From atmospheric composition to ambient temperatures, all readings are within permissible range. This place is capable of supporting life! If that's the case, then Thancred may well have gone on ahead. Let's go and have a look. to perform a full inspection of the ship, as well as a biological scan. <sighs> S 
So it was that the brave wayfarers arrived at last at Dream's End. In following their path walked and history written, I am made keenly aware of one truth. Though the curtains may fall again and again, so long as others take the stage, ever shall there be more tales to tell. So, let them bring it to a close, I say. Let the curtains fall upon this. The final chapter in the tale of the star. What? What? Oh my god. I, is this a dead star? As I live and breathe, I live and breathe! Well, the environment itself shouldn't kill us. Well then, let us search for Thancred while exploring the area. The ship we leave in your care. Didst thou witness what became of Thancred? So quickly was I overcome by Meetown's malevolence that I saw not of their altercation. There's a dizzying, disorienting feeling about this place, as if I could lose my footing at any moment. I must be careful. If Meetown should strike again with such overwhelming force, I honestly don't know how we are to oppose her. We were clearly no match for Meetown, yet we survived in unscathed. But how? That's my question. I can't guarantee it will be of help in these strange surrounds, but I've readied a provisions note in case of emergency. Of course, if you let, if you encounter any real danger here, I expect you to return to the Ragnarok at once. We're fortunate this place can support life, albeit barely, I suspect, given the torpid, stale quality of the air. But never mind that. We must find Thancred. Let's begin our search from the prow of the ship. It seems as good a direction as any. Try not to stray too far. Lest we lose sight of one another. Wow, it just looks absolutely incredible. Like, it's... In <laughs> I feel like this... Overwhelming sense of doom. A planet right over your head. And then you look behind and the ship, like... Like... From any direction, it looks like a, a sci-fi painting. It's absolutely stunning. Really. Really. It's actually a whole new zone. I, I wasn't expecting for there to be another zone. So this is uh, a surprise, to be sure. But a welcome one. Wow. Wow. I'm really, like, almost at a loss for words. It feels completely different than anything else I've experienced in the game so far. Jesus. Ruins, but of what, I wonder? Perhaps we can find something to help us understand the nature of this place. A relic, an inscription, anything. I see no one else in this barren waste, do you? Then why do I feel like we're not alone? Like there's another presence with us, something dark and mournful. The metallic pillar has been partially melted, likely sometime in the distant past. The damage does not appear to have been inflicted deliberately. Rather, it calls to mind the indiscriminate destruction often wrought in the heat of battle. There's a structure here in front of me, yes. A tower of some sort, partially melted? Hmm. 
and a strange twist of fate seems our perception of this place is not so different as it would be elsewhere. The world as I used to see it, it feels as though I'm dreaming while awake. This is more than the faded memory Meteon led us to believe. Look here, this part is relatively intact. The intricate design of the top suggests it is man-made, though its builders were surely not men as we conceive of them. Having said that, I swear I've seen this pattern before. You've seen this pattern before? I thought this hill might afford a better view of our surroundings, a poor decision in hindsight. Besides the light from the ship, all is shrouded in darkness. If the anchor is here, I'd never know it. From what I can tell, we're near the edge of an island, if you can call it that, surrounded by floating debris. I wonder if this is the world that Midgard Zormer fled from. Were we able to find anything? No. As I feared, and still no trace of Thangrid. There is nothing but emptiness as far as the eye can see, which unfortunately isn't very far. Though I can't help but suspect that someone or something is here. There are times when I sense it drawing close, and then a chill washes out over me, leaving me exhausted. Leaving me with feelings of death and anguish. <clears throat> I felt it too when I was near that thing. I thought it was weird that Estinian didn't say anything about the dragons. What are you talking about? There's nothing there. What? Before we jump to any conclusions, perhaps we should search elsewhere. Agreed. We found only more questions when we are in desperate need of answers. There's a fair stretch of terrain from the ship's starboard we've yet to explore. Let's try searching there then. Stinian, did you... Zeppelin, a word before we join the others. Okay, yeah, so he must sense something. You see them too, don't you? The dragons. As I thought, their presence is tenuous at best, but there's no mistaking it. No doubt your bond with Midgar's armor and mine with Nidhogg is what allows us to perceive them. Could these apparitions be related to the dragons that now live on Etheris? Better to leave such conjecture to the others. In any case, we must be careful. We may soon find dragons they can see as well. Hmm. Death and anguish. What happened to them, I wonder? Okay. Stinian? It seems these dragons have yet to succumb completely to the darkness of this place. Meaning the others should see them as well. Dragons, tis true they are not of our world, but to find them in a prison of despair? Surely mine eyes deceive me. This cannot be possible. Oh. Look there. Are those are those ghosts, do you think? My sight may have been restored after a fashion, but I fear what I see cannot be trusted. It's as if Meteon herself has etched these images upon my heart. I doubt not that such a feat is within her power, given that she constructed this sanctuary herself. Here. 
What you see is a memory of a world that once was. A world suffering a slow death, whose denizens cried out for the release of oblivion. What? Their world is dead? It is. Not a single life remains upon that husk floating in the vast emptiness. Hmm. These creatures are shadow in shade, perpetuated only to suffuse Dynamis with their unending lamentations. Our friend Thancred. Where is he? A strange question. He is at your side, is he not? Oh yes. He is here and there, and everywhere within this space. He would tell you himself if he had form to form words. Such loathing and uncertainty. You don't know why you still exist. In like manner to the oblivion I send. I tried to drown out your ether with dynamis. Beginning with this Thancred, who came at me despite being unable to breathe. Such a simple thing, unmaking men. In the blinking of an eye, he was gone. Didn't even have the chance to be transformed. Yet somehow, he managed to leave a slither of himself behind. What you call... the heart? Or perhaps the soul? In his final moment, he... cried out from it. A single word. Survive. <gasps> that wish proved stronger than the despair that ruled here. It overpowered it, causing this space to be remade. What? Into a place you can perceive, and where life can endure. Holy shit. That you draw breath is proof that his soul lives on. For how long, however, remains to be seen. Well then, we should hurry and tend to business. It's futile. You will never reach the true me. I told you, emotions dictate reality in this space. Such changes as you might work will not alter in its nature. You may see, but you cannot touch. Walk, but not advance. Meteor holds really too much sway here. How do we contend with a foe who can unmake us on a whim? I do not know. But Thancred gave his life that we might come this far. We must press on. Agreed. We cannot turn tail here. Not without something to show for our comrade's sacrifice. Is Thancred really gone? There's a little bit of him left. I 
it's such an interesting premise. So we went out to the edge of the universe where, by all rights, there should be nothingness. But, because it's a place ruled entirely by emotion, and Thancred, in his final... fervent, emotional desire to survive, was able to transform this place into a place with some physicality to it. A memory. Given some form. Soul without body, a form of being with which we are not wholly unfamiliar. Indeed, we existed in a similar state when residing in the first. The circumstances are rather more dire than that, tis true, but I choose to believe he is not forever lost to us. There's no way he's really, really gone. Regardless in sacrifice, he hath afforded us a chance to prevail. Let us not squander it and ascertain the nature of this realm that we might confront and defeat Meteon. Estinian, Zeppla, would you accompany me in speaking with these dragons? Mayhap they can enlighten us. I would ask the rest of you to survey these surrounds. If there's a path that may lead us to our quarry, we must find it. We'll reconvene here. Meteon said these dragons are shadow and shade from a world whose denizens sought oblivion. As such, they are not like to be amenable to company, let alone conversation, so please be careful. A visitor, not of the star. Could thy slender hands bring plague to our world? Thy breath extinguish life's feeble flame? Oh, how we would adore thee, alas. With time our flesh shall wither, our souls fade. And so we wait for its inexorable march unto oblivion. If thou art not come to hasten our demise, I bid thee leave us. We crave not companionship, only silence. To dwell on the past yieldeth not. Our desires meant little to our destiny, and less now. Yet regrets find me nevertheless. <clears throat> this reminds me of that passage from Dante's Divine Comedy that says, I, I looked it up to reread it because this just reminds me so much of that. Through me, you pass into the city of woe. Through me, you pass into eternal pain. Through me, among the people lost for I, justice, the founder of my fabric, moved. To rear me was the task of power divine, supremest wisdom and primeval love. Before me, things create were none, save things eternal and eternal I endure. All hope abandon ye who enter here. This is inscribed above the gates of hell in the divine colony. Beyond that distant veil, paradise lost. So glorious, so beautiful. We were a proud and noble race, strength embodied, we knew only love before they came. Metal monstrosities of black and silver, no bonds of blood did they share, nor conviction did they have to guide them. A crushing defeat. Never had we known such shame. Stilled now are the winds. Though none could fill these wings, burdened by ignominy, we fly no more, only sink into oblivion. Again, we return to this metaphor about losing your wings, repeated by Heidelin. From now, they will walk. No more will they have wings to carry them unto paradise. And now they will walk. Thou wouldst bid me speak? Folly. I observe the lesson of stone. 
I shall not fly nor speak nor roar, only watch and wait an end. But one sight yet stirreth my blood, tempteth me to raise my voice in lamentation. Omnol, the cradle of unsung dragons. No words, no songs are possessed of the weight to describe such tragedy. Go, if that be thy will, I shall remain. It really feels like... reading an excellent novel, but it's so much more than that because it's a fully immersive experience, like you can look around and see. It's, I think that what this expansion has been able to accomplish so far is revolutionary, I really do. Like, it shows what's capable through the art form that is games. It's incredible storytelling. If you wrote it down in a book. They led you here as well, did they? It was described to me as the source of their woes and proof to their end. I'm beginning to see why. It's a hatching ground, or was. I've seen similar on Etheris. It guards are most kind, must once have lived and thrived in a place such as this. Virtra said his father was driven from their ancestral home by war and strife. This, then, is the fate of those who remained. Let's have a look around. Maybe these eggs have more to tell of what happened here. It's oh, a baby. Inside this shattered egg, you find the remains of an unborn dragon. The body has begun to decompose. The gelatinous, half-dried membrane covering the corpse suggests it failed to emerge. A murky liquid has pooled inside this eggshell. The noxious feet are as indicative of contamination. Gingerly lifting a large egg from the viscous mire, you peer inside and see a formless mass soaking in a pool of embryonic fluid. Your stomach turns as you return the egg to its resting place. The egg appears to have been broken from the inside out. Perhaps the dragonette within succeeded in hatching. What's this? I thought all the eggs had been ruined. If the dragonette was indeed hatched, there's no sign of it here, or its sire for that matter. We should look for them. You start with the cliff tops and I'll search the plains. Okay. They're under attack. Malformed dragonette. The boisterous howling hath been quieted by thy hand, I presume. Everything all right? I thought I heard a dragon or something rem resembling one. Ah, I see what's happened here. Was that your child? Perhaps. Some eggs with an omnol are indeed mine. If life within one did quicken. The beast thou hast slain may be of my blood, yet I do not recognize it, twisted and malformed as it is. Not a dragon in truth, but a reminder of our failure, a testament to our shame. Explain. They descended from the heavens, cold, heartless machines, and with them rode war and death. With fire and fury, rage and rancor, 
we gave answer. It was a long and bloody battle, but only the beginning. Untold chaos and destruction swept over the star. In the end, the invaders were victorious. Yet when they looked upon their prize, they deemed it unfit for requisition. We were abandoned to our ruin. The survivors sought to put away their shame to rebuild a futile effort. In purest soil replete with ether did we once cultivate our nesting grounds, but our lands were barren and any ne eggs nurtured in such desolation were fated to rot. What few survived to hatch emerge as abominations. We shall have no new progeny. But there are dragons among you capable of journeying to other stars. That there are, many would make the attempt each bearing a clutch of eggs. The richest stars were home to the harshest rulers, and the arrival of dragons incited contests for supremacy. When the friars faded, the wars lost and won, they too were reduced to ash and waste. Tis the curse of those who seek life to be drawn into conflict, to conquer or be conquered. A vicious cycle we now choose to break. We tire of conflict, of everything. We wait now in sweet, merciful silence, free from strife and suffering, still as stone. Wait, you claim your kind is doomed, but there is another star. They want only to brood in silence, to be left alone with their grief until time itself comes to an end. The sole reward for senseless bloodshed, a pain I understand, and wish that I did not. What fools we were. But now isn't the time for such thoughts. The others will want to hear what we've learned. Were you able to establish any meaningful contact with the dragons? I see. They wish to escape what they perceive to be a cycle of conflict. Thank you, Zeppola, Estinian. As for our part, I believe we are more acutely aware of our confines than before. We started by traversing the perimeter of the island to see if there might be a path leading off of it. Sadly, there was nothing to be found. There was no small amount of debris floating about. Could there be enough to serve as a bridge to lead us elsewhere? I considered that, and so I tried throwing a stone onto a potential platform to judge its integrity, but it never reached its mark. As it crossed an invisible threshold just beyond the boundaries of this island, it vanished, only to reappear above me and fall at my feet. I would not be too quick to presume that what we see outside this space is as it appears. Which is why I returned to the Ragnarok and asked the Lopritz to search for a potential path. However, the ship's instruments fail to provide conclusive data on the surrounding area until we know more. I think it too risky to attempt to flying to another island. What Medion told us before, that emotions dictate reality here, might be the key. But I'm not entirely sure what emotion might manifest a bridge to lead us to safety. So what you're saying is, we've no way forward. This place is just a memory. At present, I... If it is indeed emotion that governs this island, perhaps it is not meteons, but the dragons that holds us here. Maybe that, actually. They tire of conflict, and have chosen a path of oblivion to escape it. Or rather, they have chosen no path at all. Meaning, there is no way for the dragons, or anyone here on this island, to advance. A sound theory, disheartening though it may be. If that is the case, what recourse do we have? They're not like to be persuaded to help us. Their reasoning is built on a history of turmoil and strife. Without irrefutable proof, the future is not as bleak as they believe it to be. They have persuasion is not the answer. 
Metion meant to unmake us then and there on the Ragnarok, and she would have succeeded if not for Thancred's determination. She conceded it was strong enough to overpower the despair that otherwise rules Ultima Thule, and reshape it to a degree. Perhaps it can be done again in like manner, by overpowering the prevailing emotions. Twas Ultima Thule's architect, Metion herself, against whom Thancred did put, pit himself in a clash of wills. Though I marked no leader among them as such, I did chance to encounter a dragon possessed of despair far more potent than most, potent enough mayhap to dictate the course for others, and thus their domain to follow. He spoke but few words, carefully chosen, their tone and timber alone threatening to rend my heart in twain, challenging his desire to remain may allow us to alter the island upon which we stand. Alas, I fear my vaunted rhetoric availed me not against his calcifying heart. Mayhap one of you will fare better. Then I shall guide thee. I'll end, they call him, in the dragon tongue. Thou wilt find him nearby, eyes fixed upon the water. Well, what do we have to lose? Let's get going. He remaineth as he was when I first approached, entombed in melancholy. I see. Perhaps I could... I'll handle this. Good idea. So, waiting to die like all the others, are you? Our pride is crushed and our souls corrupted. The winds are stilled and the heavens offer no comfort. So you say, yet your kind has found a new beginning on our star. One of you braved the expanse, bearing with him a clutch of eggs. They and their children now rule our skies, their song heard by all. Suffered much and repaid their suffering in kind. Man, I've got chills.
Had your brethren made the selfsame choice, my family might still be alive. Yet lasting peace does not come to those who simply retreat from conflict. No, you must be willing to confront it, to stare into the face of your foe and see yourself in him. Only then can you break the cycle of torment and tragedy. This lesson a dear friend taught me at the risk of his life. There is no nobility in your penance. You wallow in self-pity. And after everything we've endured, we will not let you stop us. Holy shit. Estinian! Stay back. Holy shit. our way. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Where should go, Estinian? Oh my god. No! Not Estinian too! He's, he was smiling though, like he didn't give in. There's a wind. He's opened the way for us. sacrificed himself to remake this place, like Thancred did. <laughs> oh, Alphano. <sighs> Come, let us follow the wind. It will not lead us astray. He would not. There's no way. There's no way it's really gone. Denial. The it's not wind. It's it's pure copium here. <laughs> That's blowing now. I'm not like I'm in. I'm in full, full on denial. No way. No way. No way. Mm -mm. Mm -mm, no. Bankrid, whatever. But Estinian.
No, 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 no. The wind has stayed the fog that covered this island and the air no longer feels quite so stifling. As by the beating of mighty wings doth wind blow, where dragons may never again touch the sky. He and the shade he bore shall soar free. is too much. <sighs> Must this always be the price paid for safe passage? If I had known this place would claim Estinian too. No, it's what had to be done. Look there, the wind. This is Estinian's doing, I'm sure of it. We should ride its flow and see where it leads. He did it. He found a way forward for us. Oh, don't play Dragon Song, Renee. Are you fucking kidding me? <sighs> the dragons remain trapped within a prison of their own making, lamenting the horrors of war. Yet Estinian knew them better than most. He was a man of honor and a dear friend, willing to fight to the very end for what he believed was right. And he's still fighting Alpha No, just like Thancred. Alice says she's got a bit of that copium too. <laughs> We're sharing it. No, oh, I've got more. Their sacrifices are why we can survive here, why we still have a chance to stop her. Even in spirit, they're unwilling to give in to despair, and we mustn't either. Alice is right, we must press on for their sake. What's this? Every quest is like a weird letter. Her chance to dream. How can I celebrate at a time like this? So who's dropping next? To feign bravery with bold words is a simple matter, but without the strength of will to match, we are powerless against a dynamis. Not less than unshakable conviction will suffice, which makes me question if I'm up to the task. No choice have we but to march onward, lest we squander their noble sacrifices. Though it pains me to say it, we can ill afford to stop and grieve our comrades passing. No, there will be time enough after. We have to keep going, even if Estinian isn't here to see it. I'm sure Alphano wouldn't want to disappoint him. <sighs> Alphano regained his home pressure. I didn't. As Ishtola and Alice said, we must continue. Hmm. Notice the change in our surroundings. Perhaps this is the memory of an altogether different world. It would be prudent to learn more of it then. Tread carefully, lest we lose our footing in the sand. Another seemingly barren world. For a mercy, the air is nowhere near a stale, but still quite dry, and the sand will no doubt prove bothersome in due time. If not for the light, 
emitted by these glyphs. I may well have overlooked this monolith. Were it not for the violet crystal embedded in its surface, it would appear as ordinary stone. A curious script hath been etched upon them. Alas, it is not a language with which I am familiar. I cannot say I recognize it either. Nor I. The dragons, from what I recall, preserve their knowledge in song and eschew the written word entirely, so we may assume this is the work of another race, one we have yet to encounter. Neetion claimed the dragon's world suffered a slow death, seeking the release of oblivion. What life we find here, like as not, doth wend its way toward a similar end. What do you suppose that is over there? I'm not sure. It's hard to make out at this distance. <clears throat> but its surface seems to bear the same crystals as this monument. Meaning there's a chance we may find whoever built them both. We should go and have a look. Now I understand why before we left, all the quest NPCs were like, make sure you hold on to your hope. Make sure you hold on to hope, because you might lose it. Hail travelers, this is a most unexpected occurrence. Um, hello there, is this your home? Indeed it is. Uh, forgive me, I had forgotten. An exchange of introductions is expected when first meeting those with whom one is unacquainted. When the vibration of vocal folds was still required to convey our thoughts and intention, Ea, I believe, was the pronunciation used when referring to our people. Though it is not entirely applicable given our present state, you are welcome to use this appellation. As for nomenclature to address my individual person, I believe it would be pronounced Kofkudg? Yes, Kofkudg of the Ea. We have encountered beings that communicate intermittently through thought, but never one that's wholly without voice. I presume we are having this conversation via the medium of ether, or dynamis, as this space is suffused, suffused with vast quantities of it. Fascinating in either case. I gather your response to my presence is positive, then. That is well. For there is something I wish to ask of you. He's, what a cool little thing. Like yourselves, we yeah, are ether-based life forms. Therefore, it may be surmised that your bodies are of comparable biological composition to those we once possessed. I have a number of queries regarding your subjective perception of the five senses, sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. In total, I prepared 198,712,188,827. Er, that's rather a lot, isn't it? Oh, my apologies. I have omitted a great many details necessary to understand the nature of my request. Though we dispensed with our corporeal vessels long ago, we have rediscovered a need for the flesh and have endeavored to recreate our erstwhile forms. However, all pertinent records have been lost due to the passage of time. Take, for example, the nervous system. It is well within our power to recreate, but we have no frame of reference for sensations once experienced by our people, which may compromise our ability to interact with our physical environment. And the reason you need to regain corporeal forms? Why? To bring an end to our existence, of course. Though need is perhaps too strong a word, it would be a simple matter to unmake ourselves through use of etheric exsanguinators, but such a death seems inadequate. The traditionalist among us believe proper death requires an inescapable sense of impermanence in one's final moments, an experience found only with bodies of flesh.
We should very much like to hear more of your plans. In exchange, we will answer any questions you have to the best of our ability. Hmm, such an exchange of information would indeed prove useful. Very well. To ensure efficacious exchange, I hereby invite you to our home. Yes, the abode of the Ia, where we traditionalists prepare for our demise. I presume your consent to answer questions is indicative of a tacit approval of our plans, in which case, your cooperation is greatly appreciated. I must caution you, however, to be mindful of the Ia wandering the desert. Their desire for bodies of flesh could be described as overzealous. Now if you would follow me. So they will attack you to get your body? This is it going rather smoothly, not that I'm complaining, mine. We mustn't forget their aim is oblivion, much like the dragons. Though I fail to see why a civilization so seemingly advanced would choose to unmake all they have created. We have no answers dallying here. Welcome to our abode. Most of our compeers you will find remain idle in their domiciles. Though your quizzical expressions indicate my phrasing is unclear. I speak, of course, of the violet crystalline constructs hanging from the stone structures there. You say they remain idle, but what of your work to regain corporeal bodies? An astute question, and understandable, given your finite nature. We have no desire to pursue our research, for it is no longer necessary. If, in our idleness, we are struck by sudden inspiration, we rise to pursue said inspiration to its conclusion. That is why I was present for your arrival, and why I continue to engage with you still. But while the others are not currently in a motile state, rest assured they would not object were you to disturb their respite. You need only cast your thoughts towards one of their crystalline domiciles to communicate. There's no response on this one. I mean, maybe they don't have, like, any particular reason. Like, they're aliens, so... Maybe they're just, like, tired. You, you wish to speak? Very well. Pray a moment, if you would. Oh, he's gonna... Why we seek our end, you ask? If you wish to know, I will tell you. Just a moment, I must remember. What form did I take when last I emerged? Maybe they're all gonna come out and tell us. Uh, strange moaning comes and goes, but soon fades into silence. Did your inquiries yield satisfactory responses? I see. If they failed to answer, then it is likely because their minds have unraveled due to the prolonged idleness. They are not, but concentrated ether now. Worry not. There are no others who have need of those lodgings, and they will not prove a hindrance to remain as they are. But more importantly, you said some few did answer your request for an audience, yes? I imagine they will be with us ere long. Had no luck, but everyone else fared well enough. Quite a few Ia have awakened. There they are. May I introduce you to La Lock, Dudik, and Nani? Ninj? It has been too long, Kafkug. I dare say Sonar 4 has since completed an orbit. Indeed, until the travelers brought it to my attention, I hadn't noticed how unraveled some had become. Travelers? Ah, of course, of course. The ones who wish to know why we seek to regain corporeal forms. The truth of the matter is as plain to see as the neighboring systems, but my single account would fail to satisfy the requirement for scientific objectivity. Thus did I bid them awaken you. 
I the only one who struggles to tell who's speaking? <laughs> Nay, thou art not. In the absence of corporeal forms and the divergence they afford, mayhap such similarity in voice is unavoidable. By the way, Kafkud, have you already observed the requisite custom for the travelers? That which one is expected to do when receiving guests. A matter of proper form. Ah, yes. So long has it been. And it completely escaped my mind. It still does. What was it again? I can't seem to remember. Neither do I. A pity. I was hoping you would. Perhaps we can search the archives for the answer. Come now, Nanid. The archives have long been frozen. Lest we subject ourselves to further dolor, surely you recall that much. Ah, uh, of course. Food. The custom is to serve food. Beings of flesh such as they must regularly replenish their ether by contributing to their replenishment. We communicate our friendly intention. That's right, that's right. <laughs> we duly invite you to join us in communal repast, over which we may engage in leisurely conversation. If we have a chance to learn something, then I see no reason to decline. This is a welcome distraction. Excellent. If you would care to follow, we shall feast you on the purest ether. Is this going to be a new beast tribe? How much has my essence deteriorated since last I was awake? Not that I'm averse to having my mind fade away in this manner. It isn't so unlike the natural degradation of one's flesh. How delightful. Throughout the universe, but few races have completely shed their flesh as we have. As a result, we seldom receive visitors from other systems. Extreme indifferences may inhabit, may inhibit meaningful interaction, you see, and none more so than those which affect communication. Most entities, for example, cannot even comprehend our words. You're rare indeed in your ability to do so. You avail yourselves of dynamis, yes? It is an impressive application, even if it is ultimately pointless, like all the rest. How much ether would be adequate for your kind, I wonder? As I recall, there's a fine line between optimal satiation and violent sickness. This facility is where we replenish our ether. There's no particular name for it. We traditionalists sometimes use the word restaurant. Now then, if you would take your place with your comrades, this space will soon be awash with purest ether. Please absorb as much as you like. You brace yourself for a rush of sweet, sweet ether. That's something Emmett Selk said a long time ago, but nothing seems to happen. Perhaps you need to wait a little longer. You brace yourself again, but again, nothing seems to happen. Just as I su suspected, as meticulously as one might recreate the Ea's home world, this is ultimate fool. One cannot simply generate ether here. As recreations, our friends are oblivious to this fact, to the very truth of their existence, much like the phantoms of the recreated Amara. Yeah. However appearances may seem, we must ever be mindful that it is the memories of the dead with whom we deal. Yeah, this is just memories. I assume generated by a meteon. So, did you have your fill of ether? Alas, we couldn't absorb it. A deficiency in our forms, it would seem. Oh, how very unfortunate. May I ask how you normally replenish your ether? Through your mouths, you say? How very primitive and quaint. To think that their mouths serve not only to expel sound, but draw in sustenance besides. Such life forms have long since vanished from our systems. Though we regrettably could not partake of your magnificent feast, rest assured, we feel your welcome most keenly. In the course of acquainting ourselves with your sophisticated ways, however, we could not fail but wonder 
How, wherefore do you wish to obtain vessels of flesh and then to vanish? Will you not favor us with an explanation? You flesh and blood beings are always so hasty. It does have its charm, however. Very well, we shall indulge you. In the beginning, when the Ea yet possessed corporeal bodies, our ancestors dedicated themselves to the pursuit of knowledge and technological advancement. By transcending all limitations, we believed we would eliminate sorrow and abide in true happiness. From the tangible, such as land, to the intangible, such as labor, there exist myriad hindrances to progress, but the most confining of all was the flesh itself. Our natural lifespan was distressingly middling, you see, too short to enjoy unhurried lives, yet too long to be considered disposable. Furthermore, to simply maintain the integrity of our bodies demanded considerable resources. But we managed to solve this problem. After long years, we discovered how to become non-corporeal entities with everlasting lives, untroubled by the failures of the flesh. Thus changed, we had more time and freedom to continue our scientific pursuits. We went on to make ever greater strides in our quest to transcend all limitations until we finally decided to challenge the last of them all, the limit of knowledge. That is to say, deciphering the laws of creation. We sought to discover how the universe came into being and explain all extant phenomena and thence predict the future. If we could but achieve this, we believed that we would be free from uncertainty and anxiety. And did you find the answers you sought? Yes, we did. Our efforts revealed to us a fundamental truth. Knowledge of said truth is essential for the continuation of our conversation. If you would learn more, we will share it with you. No, we mustn't. Primitive as they are, it would be unspeakably cruel to deprive them of their ignorance. They are possessed of corporeal forms. Their lives readily ended. As those who have gone before, is it not our duty to warn them? What thinkest thou? We have deliberated and come to a consensus. If you are resolved to know it, we will disclose to you the truth we discovered, the truth of the universe. Seek us at the stone pillars just outside the bonds of the bounds of the abode, a place called Elegia. Okay. To define the laws of creation would have been no small feat, even for the Aeop. Nay, having eternal life and hence no sense of haste would only have made it harder. Such tremendous drive for knowledge they once have, must have had, and I struggle to reconcile it with the listless beings before us. Whatever answers they found, it did not bring them happiness. Like her master, Ishtola seeketh the truth of creation. How will the truth of the Ea, who uncovered all only to desire the end, fall upon her ears? It is true that a lack of knowledge can beget fear. Therefore, in theory, by acquiring all knowledge, it may be possible to attain peace. But as Heidelin told us, all those peoples who attempted to free their worlds from life's woes met with failure, and the Ea are among them as their presence here attests. The tale we are about to hear will not be a happy one. A fundamental truth. We will hear it, of course. Let us learn what has led such an enlightened people to this indolent end. Ere we join the air, there is one trifling matter I would fain investigate. Zeppla, Krahatia, might I trouble you for your assistance? But of course. My thanks. We shall head outside the abode if you would kindly follow me. 
I know not what mischief you're plotting, Orianje, but I trust you have our best interests at heart. The rest of us shall go on ahead to Elegea. Lest you worry, we won't start without you. Aye, this place shall serve. Is it the spring that you wish to investigate? Pray forgive me, my friends, but there is naught to investigate. <laughs> Twas but a pretense to speak in private. You have our undivided attention. As we have established, here in Ultima Thule, those denizens of ruined stars are recreated in their twilight days. Yet one question doth arise in my mind. So faithfully formed are the simulacra, they believe themselves yet amongst the living. How dost thou suppose this is possible? Meteon has taken their hearts unto herself. I'm inclined to agree. If Meteon can take the emotions of others as her own, I dare say she would be able to recreate them more faithfully than had she relied on any historical account. By which logic, she must have visited and visited them while they still lived, the dragons and the air both. So too did I theorize, and, upon that assumption, consider how those two races may have met their demise. According to thine own tale, Medion perceiveth the emotions of those nearby as her own. A heightened sense of empathy, intrinsic to her nature as an entelechy. In the course of her star-faring journey, if she encountered beings who strongly desired a cessation of their existence, she would be powerless before that desire. Even as she possesseth the power to grant it, the power of dynamis. Tis my supposition that, overwhelmed by their longing for death, Meteon did unleash dynamis and ushered the dragons and the Ea onto their doom. Well, that seemed pretty clear, but it's good to just get it all like, set in stone, like this is, this is what we assumed has been happening, but let's just clarify it. Of course, such was not always the outcome. Full many stars did she find, already lost to ruin. In order to create a terminus, however, the fervent desire for the end is essential. Therefore, should you struggle to find the way forward, pray ask yourselves this, in the place where you stand, whose is the soul that yearneth most desperately for oblivion? Why do you tell us this now? Ne'er again would I betray your trust. This pledge I did make to my comrades, and bringing thee into my confidence, I would remain true to my word. As for thee, let us consider it my fitting reward for the secrets I harbored for the Crystal Eggs Ark. I once placed my faith in thy chosen path, walking at thy side, full knowing that we were bound for thy demise. I ask now, 
that thou returnest the favor and abide in faith as I fulfill mine own destiny. If you say my debt has come due, how am I to refuse? Tis indelicate of me, I know full well, but I can but beg thy forgiveness. Yet even as I must needs go to such lengths, I cannot well feign ignorance of the answer I have found within. Answer to the question, in what moment might I stra stand as strongest? After all that we've been through, I will say only this, do what you must, do what you must, and see your conviction through. I shall, my friend, I shall. Without further ado then, let us go to join our comrades. Okay. Please continue. Tell us about this truth you discovered. Very well. Bear in mind, however, that the purpose of this conversation is not to impart scholarly knowledge, for such requires that you comprehend the subject matter which you will not. We will forego the intricacies of our scientific methodology and deal only with the conclusion, the end of our society and our world. Acknowledge, with regret, that your star is in the midst of the same panic-induced cataclysm that befell Denet III. As such, in order to avoid causing undue distress, we will refrain from explicitly stating how much time you have remaining. You are entirely too kind. I pray you recount your tale as you see fit. In the beginning, the universe was but a tiny particle. Then suddenly, this particle began to expand. Having remained entirely in the bounds of your star, the phenomenon may be difficult for your kind to grasp. But this expansion has since continued unabated. Speculating that the universe could not grow indefinitely, we sought to learn what might occur, and made a worrying discovery. The stars will continue to spread apart, as will their finite thermal energies. Eventually, all heavenly bodies will grow cold and freeze. No new stars will be born and the universe will enter onto an eternal ice age. In hopes of proving that this determination was erroneous, we scrutinized our research from all angles, even as we sought to avert the everlasting winter. The endeavor proved fruitless. So infamously so, in fact, that it became synonymous with vain effort. The universe as we know it would end, and there is no way to prevent it. Beneath the weight of this knowledge, our society stagnated. Though we had time still, it was a cold comfort. Why strive for anything when desolation is assured? When our wealth of wisdom, accumulated since the dawning of our kind, 
would be forever lost. No civilization would rise from our ashes. No scholar recover our knowledge. In silence unbroken, naught would stir. Intellect was once our pride. Overnight, it became our shame. Our works, monuments to futility. Immortality, our greatest invention, became a source of suffering. Rather than suffer on, many chose to unmake themselves by means of etheric exsanguinators. Etched upon these stones are the testaments of such souls. Though many left no words at all, thinking it a pointless gesture. Once we have obtained vessels of flesh, we likewise intend to vanish. If you understand this, understand aught of our tale, you will abandon your quest for knowledge. Ignorance truly is bliss. If you would cling to your illusory happiness, remain primitive and pure. It is the only way. So, that's your story. While I appreciate your advice, I will not heed it. Convinced though you may be of this truth, it is yours and not mine. Indeed, truth, I have ever believed, is in the eye of the beholder. Are you suggesting that we have reached a faulty conclusion? That our science failed us? Hardly. As you yourself said, the subject matter is beyond my comprehension. And that, I accept, is true. I do not possess the knowledge to prove or disprove your conclusion. In my mortal years, I doubt I could even approach the wisdom of the air. But of one thing am I absolutely certain. I would not be happier in ignorance. You stole a note! Oh no! You mustn't! Another one! The most important lesson I've learned is that learning isn't simply passing one's eyes over words. Nay, <laughs> tis when understood for oneself that knowledge attains its true value. This is what has sustained me, driven me onward in joy and wonder, in anger and sorrow. The universe may end, and all may be for naught, but I will live as I always have. I will always seek out new knowledge, and no conclusion of yours, no matter how grim, can dampen my desire. I suppose it is only to be expected. Their feeble minds cannot fathom the terrifying gravity of it all. But worry not. We consider it our duty to enlighten you. And we will not stop until you grasp the full extent of our despair. Listen well. Though my body will soon dissipate, there may be a way to restore it. Oh my god, thank you. Asim's magic. So long as our souls remain, you can use it to summon us back. 
But you mustn't, for it would mean losing our way forward. This I only reveal so that you can promise not to invoke the magic. We came here knowing what victory may cost, so press on. Press on, and do not look back. I shall join thee. As subterfuge is not required, thou shalt not suffer for mine absence. Briange. My resolve hath never been as strong as thine. Full oft have I wavered in my decisions, and afterwards been stricken with regret. In spite of this, I may still stand with my comrades, supporting them as they attempt the greatest of feats. This truth I have learned in the course of our journey. And many though my shortcomings may be, I may also claim to excel in prophecies. My studies, into which have granted me the flexibility of mind needed to bend this malleable reality. Thus shall I hope that thou mayest have the strength to resist, and our comrades the strength to continue. With you to urge us on, how could we possibly fail? Two more gone. Two more. What's this? An extinguished civilization? Rekindled? That's right! Our quest doesn't end here! We'll press on! And we will find you! There. That's where you'll find me. Is that... another star? Of the stars we visited, most were already devoid of life. And where there was life still, the inhabitants wished for death. But even death, we learned, isn't truly the end. It is but a part of the cycle of rebirth. Souls return to the star, or in its absence, a larger flow. And eventually they are reborn, alive again, to know suffering anew. True salvation lies not in dying. It lies in not being born. This is the gift I would give to you. To all life on beautiful Atheris. To that end, we created an egg wherein life cannot quicken. That dead sun. Attain it if you can, before your friends' emotions fade away, along with their protection.
Are you all ready to continue on? Then let us make for the light, Sholem. Shola and Rianjay have opened the way for us. Well... Ishtola said that there's probably a way to, like, recreate her, like, to get her back. And she definitely would not have said that if it wasn't going to happen. Uh, so. However, the dead son situation <laughs> is more perplexing. still have the twins and Graha, but I feel like maybe not for much longer with how things have been going. Yes, I can feel it. The ether emanating from the arcane pattern. This is a portal and no mistake. Let's see where it leads. Okay. level trigger it's like omega okay Amazing, yet another civilization. Attacked as soon as you arrived? Not the most welcoming of places, is it? We must try to find denizens who are amenable to conversation. We should also get the lay of the land, see how far we can go. I'll help Alpha know with that. In the meantime, you and Graha can search for friendlier folk. Apart from hostile beings, take care with your footing. I mislike the look of this terrain. Not knowing what the locals are like, you'd best take care of yourselves. We'll find you once we've finished exploring. That doesn't sound good. They're gonna go off on their own? Okay. I think they're next. I expect the twins will seek out the outermost bonds of the isle, so I propose we search the central area. There are machines patrolling here and there. Sentinels in all likelihood. Like those you encounter, they'll most certainly attack any who venture too close. So let us avoid them and look for others that appear more approachable. Okay. I mean, in spite of the horror of what's going on, it's really absolutely stunning zone. Like, I said Elpis was the most beautiful zone I had seen in the game. This is, I would say, as beautiful as Elpis, just in a different, completely different way. This is all extremely distressing, but I actually started to relax a little bit after the latest disappearances because Ichola was like, oh, I can probably get remade. Because, I mean, this isn't normal dimension. It's made of dynamis. And Meteon, when we first met her, said that we're kind of like Entelechis, too. We're like her. Look, Zeppelin, the machines here do not appear hostile. Let's see if we can communicate with them. Begging your pardon, we're searching for the denizens of the star. Bzz. Unknown life forms detected. Assigning generic label interplanetary travelers. Greetings and, greetings and welcome to the planet. The planet? What? Could you please repeat that? 
It appears your hearing organ is unable to process the name in our tongue. It may be translated into yours as Alphatron. Our people, meanwhile, are called the Om Omicrons, and you stand within one of our outposts. The Omicrons, you say. What is it that you do here? We are preparing for war. As we presently do not have a designated target, you have nothing to fear. Should your star become designated, however, you will be taken into custody and or terminated. Not a little frightening, these Omicrons, but at least they seem to be forthright. I will see what else I can learn from this fellow, if you could try speaking with the others. Are these the machines that destroy the dragon's world? Z Greetings, Traveler. When venturing outside the outpost, beware malfunctioning units. They do not heed Sir's commands and indiscriminately attack all non-Omicrons. For the avoidance of confusion, be advised that Sir is the alias of Stigma-1. Sir issues instructions to our forces as the foremost of the six strategic mattresses that bear the designation Stigma. Measuring combat capability, result negligible. Subject falls outside targeting parameters. Greetings, Traveler. We are the Omicrons, and our objective is self-enhancement. In order to achieve this, we venture forth in conquest to acquire combat data and resources. Most recently, we succeeded in subjugating the homeworld of the beings whose strength was said to be without parallel, the dragons. Yet though the endeavor yielded a wealth of combat data, the star was rendered barren and unable to yield resources, a subsequent costing determined that the losses incurred exceeded the gains. Holy shit. Autonomous weapon deployment complete. Vanguard armament upgrade complete. Munition levels satisfactory. Combat readiness assessment nominal. Awaiting instructions from sir. Maintaining state of combat readiness. The question is who created them? You learned a few things, so did I. Ere we share our findings, however, I believe it best to step outside the outpost. Come with me. Ah, uh, there you are. We finished surveying the area. This will come as no surprise, but there was no way forward. There were portals like the one we used to get here, but those that worked only sent us to isolated aisles. And as before, we must locate the embodiment of the emotion that bars the way. What of yourselves? Did you find anyone to speak with? So the Omicrons seek to advance themselves through conquest. Following their victory over the dragons, they stand ready for the next campaign, but their leader has yet to issue new commands, and so they wait. In such a place, who could it be that fits Orionje's description? A soul whose yearning for oblivion surpasses all others. Orionje said this? During our investigation before we joined you in Algeria, So that's the way of it. Why couldn't he just say it to all of us? I know! Given what we know of this place, it's certainly a curious state of affairs. While the dragons and the Ea longed for death, the Omicrons longed for conflict, as much as that may lead to destruction. It must be considered a distinct desire. In order to find the source of the dominant emotion, I believe we should seek out their leader, this Sir. According to M032, the first Omicron with whom we spoke, there is a console by which we might communicate with it. M032 also added that it would be a pointless exercise, but that in itself, I believe, is worth investigating. What say you? Their leader is probably Omega, and Omega is dead.
Hmm. But how can the machines experience such a strong emotion? Like, maybe this is going to teach us something different. And it's not going to be despair. I don't know. It's unresponsive. Would you care to take a look at it? You tried touching, smacking, and attuning with the console. There's no response. No luck, I see. There must be a way to activate it. There must. Hmm. <sighs> well, I'm out of ideas. As am I. Operating such consoles is trying enough. But if we can't even activate it... Perhaps there is a way. First, consider the world that has been recreated here. Its inhabitants were machines who gathered combat data to enhance themselves. And among the many wars they waged, the most notable was that against the dragons. As you've doubtless surmised, I believe this was the home world of Omega. Sid built a jamming device to defeat it, a device which generated massive bursts of lightning its sole weakness. That's all well and good, but what does that... Wait. You're not thinking to strike the console with lightning, are you? <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact, I am. Ask yourselves this. Why would an entity as puissant as Omega not be designed to suppress the effects of lightning? Because it relies upon it, or something akin to it, as a source of energy. My thoughts exactly, and there is a good chance the same is true of the Omicrons and their devices. So, shall I cast caution to the wind and try something reckless and dramatic? <laughs> oh man. Or I could use my custom-made Omega Jammer. still have it! Sid and Nero's legendary device which brought low the super weapon Omega! Hell yeah, I got it. Wait, the actual right, no. device gotta was click much on too it. big to lug around, it's so a duty action. you must only have the control module. And there I was getting all excited. Never mind. An old-fashioned spell will suffice. for you. Of late, no mission orders have been issued. Why not? Has there been some manner of trouble? Reply. The extended operations unit is yet to determine guidelines to future assignments. All strategies are calculated, devised, and fashioned in accordance with set guidelines. In the interim, all citizens are directed to maintain a state of combat readiness. Can you tell us why the Extended Operations Unit hasn't yet determined the guidelines? I'm able to comply. Information unavailable or access restricted. In that case, is it possible for us to communicate directly with the unit? Access denied. Unable to establish connection. Is there anything you can tell us? 
Have there been any abnormalities, like a, a threat to the star or widespread unrest? Reply. Negative. All citizens continue to operate at maximum efficiency. If your operations are suboptimal, please proceed to a maintenance facility for evaluation. Otherwise, stand by at your designated post. End reply. I could activate it again, but I doubt it would be productive. What do you think? If all the Omicrons really were running as efficiently as it claimed, then I doubt they were hoping for life here to end. As this Sir told us, there just haven't been any new instructions and everyone is standing by. Should be standing by at any rate. If there are those that are neglecting their duties, perhaps we can glean a clue from them. I propose we take another look around, and also try to find the operations unit. Okay. and I will try speaking with the Omicrons this time in the hopes we might learn something new. Meanwhile, perhaps you and Graha could observe them from a distance. These beings are systematic and routine by nature. If there are any that aren't, it shouldn't be too difficult to spot them. If there are no questions, let's begin at once. That was such a cool scene where it like turns into an eye and this looks like a nerves around the eye. Let's begin by observing the Omicrons. They're supposed to be standing by. Okay. Find an Omicron behaving suspiciously. Oh, he's running around pretty fast. I gotta get him, it was so quick. Oh my god, how am I gonna get it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> the Omicron wanders about ceaselessly as if lacking a clear objective. Okay, I got it. An Omicron wandering aimlessly where? It's a cool design. Aha, I see it. It's left the base. Let's follow it. This zone is absolutely spectacular, by the way. Like, I don't have to tell you that. That much is clear. But it just... Every screenshot you take here could be a painting. It's incredible. Like, look at this thing out there. Wow. I'm like, I truly feel I'm on the far reaches of space. It really feels like that. We are very far from home.
What is your query? Ah, you found it. What are you doing here? I am looking at the tree. Quite an unusual specimen. What is the device attached to it? The tree is a sample collected from another star. As it cannot survive in our environment, however, it requires life support. That is the function of the device. To go to such lengths to sustain it. Is there something special about this tree? Being foreign matter, protocol requires that we study it. As this task has been completed, the specimen may be discarded. However, when I behold the tree, I am made to feel as though there is a problem. In order to become strong, we have continued to enhance ourselves like we did countless others. We conquered the star whence this tree came. It is the last remnant of a dead world and there is nothing towards which it may aspire, yet it grows, extends its branches, sprouts leaves, produces seeds. Why does it seek to continue? Why was it made to behave in such a way? And to what end? I do not understand. I see. Out of curiosity, does this pertain to your duty? No, it does not. My apologies. I shall return to my designated post and assume a state of combat readiness. So, it was acting outside of orders. Perhaps it is simply a malfunctioning Omicron. These are by no means uncommon, but it may also be a unit possessed of the ability to make decisions, one not unlike Sir. I believe this bears further investigation. <sighs> to endeavor to live even if we must depend on forces beyond our control. Tell me, Zeppelo, one day, when this adventure becomes a part of your epic, do you think I will be mentioned in it? <clears throat> of course, why wouldn't you be? You truly think so? That would be a... Nay, I shouldn't say such things until the moment comes to pass. Never mind the embarrassment. <sighs> well, we had best get on with our task. Tracking down Sir and understanding the nature of the emotion which bars our way. the sound of that. Interesting, really poetic moment there. Looking at the tree. Asking the question. Why does it seek to continue? When there's nothing towards which it may aspire, 
It just does. Kuraha says you found a suspicious Omicron. That's good. Because the units here were of no help. They all had the same thing to say about the extended operations unit, that there's no way to arrange a direct meeting. Still, that served to prove that it's business as usual at the outpost. But enough about us. Tell me you learned something more useful. An Omicron trying to make sense of the meaning of life. None of the, <clears throat> none of the others were even a fraction as philosophical. This unit may well be in a position of leadership, perhaps even one of those that comprise Sir. As we know, the Omicrons invade other stars and enhance themselves using the spoils of conquest. With the technology at their disposal, they should be able to alter their bodies, be it in part or in whole. Setting aside the question of motive, if Sir, for example, wished to have an ordinary Omicron's body, I see no reason why it would not be possible. The problem is how to go about ascertaining if that's what happened. When I attempted to probe further, it promptly ended the conversation. If it is indeed Sir, I doubt it would willingly reveal its true identity. I have an idea. We use lightning on the console again, but we make it stronger, much stronger. At that moment, should the unit exhibit a reaction, that could suggest that it has a connection to Sir. An inspired idea, I dare say it's worth a try. I have a feeling you'd be on board. This time you must allow me to do the honors. I'll stand guard in case your incantation draws sentries to the scene. Okay. For my part then, I'll approach our suspect and divert its attention. During which time, Zeppelin, I want you to observe it closely for anomalous behavior. I should mention that shortly before you returned, an Omicron appeared from the same direction. Rather than entering the HALT post, however, it headed off towards the console. At first I assumed it was a unit on patrol, but perhaps... That could be... That could only be our errant Omicron. We must stick it out and begin our operation at once. All right, Alphano, and I will stand by at the console, and when it's time, I'll unleash a veritable storm. Veritable storm. This will work, I'm sure of it. After all, our comrades are watching over us. Come, my friend. Let us find this doubt-plagued Omicron. You're the one that was observing the tree, <clears throat> are you not? Fool, glad I am to find you again. I have a question for you, you see, about this device which sustains the tree. Provided it does not necessitate the disclosure of restricted information very well. He's begun distracting the Omicron. Search M017 for anomalous behavior after LSA has cast her spell. You may move the camera as well as zoom in and out. Oh, I need to identify the anomaly. Anomaly, you say? Performing diagnostic error confirmed. My connection to Central Command is suffering from intermittent failures. I must leave at once and present myself for maintenance at the nearest facility. You will excuse me. What you need, my friend, isn't maintenance. It is to confront the truth. While we spoke, our comrades struck the console used to communicate with Sir. That is the cause of your anomaly. You are connected to Sir, aren't you?
Affirmative. To what end you sought to assert this fact, I do not know. But before we speak further, we must move away from the other units. I do not wish for them to know my true identity. Very well, our friends are at the console. Let us head there. unit struggles to understand why the tree continues to grow despite being destined to die. Let us shed light on its doubts that we may shine the way forward. May we ask why you did this? From what we gather, it seems to be a personal matter. Our kind did not always work as they do now. Long ago, we possessed frail and feeble bodies. Beleaguered by stronger races, our ancestors took to augmenting their flesh in order to defend themselves. What began with limited parts eventually spread to the whole body, and at last, a means was discovered to convert the mind into data, rendering even the brain obsolete. Such complete mechanical beings were called the Omicrons, and by their might, we came to reign supreme over the star. But even then, we did not feel secure, for we knew that the universe was home to civilizations aside from our own. Civilizations that may be stronger still than us. Rather than risk becoming the subjugated, we chose to become the subjugator. We began our conquest of the stars, that we might acquire the resources and knowledge we needed to reign supreme. <clears throat> it's like a Garlean logic. We were successful in that endeavor. So powerful did we become, we can lay low even the mighty dragons. But then something unexpected happened. I began experiencing an error. I could no longer determine an optimal path. You were malfunctioning. Formed numerous full system scans, each time finding no issues. Yet the error persisted. It was then that I speculated. What could happen if we grew so powerful as to have no equal? Essential to our existence. Our 
every action has given itself as to this objective. But if nothing lies beyond this, can it be truly said that it was a censure? Have we been engaging only in wanton destruction? You could find no threat to justify your purpose. The Omicrons will never leave this star. They will stand by until the results of energy are spent. For I have no craft to offer them. None. It is not our place to pass judgment on the deeds of the Omicrons. But surely, this does not have to spell the end of your people. With your power and knowledge, the possibilities are endless. Why not seek out a new purpose? That is impossible. In the beginning, we had a higher purpose than our pursuit of power, but we lost sight of it when we so irrevocably altered our fundamental forms. When we cast aside our flesh, so too did we cast aside all that defined us. Nothing remains of who we once were. I have no aspirations. No longer can I dream. The vital spark is lost. Mm. Lost amidst circuitry and code and commands. Oh. I believe I know how to overcome this despair. The words are ready in my mind, but ere I speak them... I want you to make me a promise. Be it across time or space, our promises have always connected us. And so I ask that you indulge me once more, that this won't be the end. Is that so? In that case, I won't hold back. First, I want to visit Ishgard with you. Properly. We scarcely had time to look around last time. I should like it very much if you could show me the sights. Next, you must regale me with your greatest adventures in the places where you lived them, if possible. I may have read about all your deeds, but there is no substitute for a first-hand account. And last but not least, a new adventure together, unlike any we've experienced before. We'll travel the lands, cross the seas, and take to the skies upon the eternal wind, and it will be marvelous. It will. <sighs> 
If you would humor me a moment, when we awaken each morning, how can we prove that we're the same individual who retired the night before? <clears throat> He's about to say that it doesn't matter that you lost your old selves because there is no self. Through the remembrance of past events, we might say, we have our memories, yet there are times when we forget or recall incorrectly. What of our bodies, then? It is the same one, we might say, yet, technically speaking, as living beings, our bodies are constantly changing. It will never be as it was at an earlier point in time. Our souls are no more immutable. On our star, people are known to inherit the souls of others, yet they are decidedly different beings. For my part, I've subjected my totality to much and more. I've made my body into an extension of a tower, blended my soul and memories with those of another self. And each time I would ask myself, what is it? that makes me, me. Are you able to determine an answer? No. But that doesn't mean I'm confused. It simply means I'm the same as everyone else. So I posit this. Who we were need not prescribe what we now hold in our hearts. Whatever came before, what matters most is the present. For me, that is being here with my friends, full proud of how much we've grown together. So I urge you to not give up. Heed your heart's desire and hope that the future you long for shall be realized. I cannot. We cannot. We cannot understand desire, nor comprehend hope. We do not know how to create such things. We are not unlike you and I. I too have struggled to find the courage to express and embrace my wants. If you like, I will tell you a tale. A tale of a world on the brink. Of a people who never gave up on the future. Of a man who realized his grandest dreams and then awakened to a grander reality.
they all leave so easily as if it's nothing. How do they think we feel? The next time we meet, I'll, I'll give him such a flick and that'll be just a start. That crystalline path, Gra has paved it for us. Difficult as it is, we must carry on for our friends and all who await us in faith. So come, let us seek the path's beginning. It appears to be near the outpost. I did appreciate how my character started to look pissed in this last one. She's like, this is too much. Look, Zeppla, a portal is opened. It will surely deliver us true, it must. where the path begins and it ascends to dizzying heights let us make our way one sure step at a time our friends got us this far their courage their strength their wisdom their love we owe it to them to continue no matter how long it takes yes them behind. I always do that. Into the silence. They anchored with Scout the Road Ahead. Shtola and Orianje would trade opinions on the esoteric subjects. Graha would join in their discussion. Earl's chat with me and Alan say about the mission. Estinian would be at the rear, apart yet present. All the while you would come and go, wherever you're needed, and together we would travel. All I can hear are my footfalls, my heartbeat. It's so much quieter now. But the fact we can breathe and continue on is proof that the others are still with us. They are. They are, aren't they? Oh, I did it again. Like I said, I do this every time. a dream, isn't it? A long, elaborate dream. Any moment now, I'll wake up in my bed, still a student, grandfather alive. I'll go about my day, relieved as the fragments of that other life fade away. And that would be happiness, wouldn't it? But none of it, no. 
No, I won't give up these experiences. Good and bad, they're mine. They're me. The portal is barely visible from up here. Truly, we've come far, much farther than would have been possible had we kept chasing perfect ideals as we did in the past. It's because we've known failure and frustration that we've learned and grown from them that Heidelin has entrusted us with this mission, with the fate of the very star. I'm fine, but thank you for your concern. What of yourself, that we cannot afford to be too leisurely, neither need we rush unduly. We've crossed an impossible distance to stand where we are now, and we're but a few steps away from journey's end. It will be over before we know it. Me? Oh, I still have plenty of legs left in me, don't you worry. It's you I'm worried about. You always push yourself so hard for us, for everyone. And while we're here, we'll make sure to bear our share of the burden. There are some structures up ahead, still a ways to go before we reach the dead sun. Given all this, I know how naive it must sound, I hope it all works out somehow. Still, you'll forgive me if I wish for it all the same, and for you most of all. Not that you of all people need it, it's just after all the help you've given me. For once, I want to be the one to help you. This is it. The end of the path. And the beginning of whatever awaits. There will be greater hardships. We may be made to feel powerless. Yet come what may, let us have no regrets. No, let us have pride in what we've achieved. And what we achieved and how it changed us for the better, that's worth fighting for and dying for, as they did. <sighs> this is almost Normal? It's not unlike many cities we know, but it's deathly quiet. Mayhap the inhabitants are within the buildings, or invisible to our senses. Wrong on both counts, there is simply no one here. Meteon. This is how I found it when I arrived. Another star which once pulsed with life, but no longer. How it ended, I do not know. Invasion, sickness, suicide, none can say. 
None lived to speak for the dead. They are gone. Gone. Search all you like, but you'll only end up turning back. You think you've caught me? This form is barely a drop from the ocean that swells within the dead sun. Even so, I could easily unmake you. You are only still alive because of your comrades, but they cannot protect you forever. Until they fade away. <clears throat> Until they fade away. I'll satisfy myself with watching you try and fail to find a way out of this lifeless place. If there is no one here, then neither should there be emotion to bar our way. Yet Medion seems convinced we'll turn back. What riddle is this? Wherever Mityan, whatever Mityan may have said, we should confirm it, confirm it with our own eyes. We need to have a look around. Indeed, at the very least, it doesn't appear to be a sprawling place like those before. If we split up, it shouldn't take too long to cover the area. Like mail boxes. Were it not for the thick layer of dust, one could imagine someone drinking from these cups but moments ago. <clears throat> In the distance, he glimpsed Alice, eh? picking her way through the ruins, but otherwise spied no signs of life. If anyone can hear me, say something. Your call echoes faintly before being swallowed by the silence. Though set slightly off the ground, this appears to be a door, while the object to the left could be letter boxes. The door is rusted shut, and the film of dust all over suggests no one has come through in a long, long time. Tree-like object. The object resembles a tree and appears to have been fashioned from a stone-like material, erected in place of an actual tree or to serve some other purpose, perhaps. Regardless, there is no one left to explain, to tell the story. There doesn't seem to be anyone here. Perhaps you could try calling out. Is anyone here? Doubt it. This place is reminiscent of a bar, but neither patrons nor staff are anywhere to be seen. Egg-shaped containers line the shelves, with a loose few sitting on the counter. Vessels for the beverages, in all likelihood. The venue bustling with activity until it was not. <clears throat> Zeppla, take a look at this. If the road was a little longer, we could take it to just beneath the dead sun. But I suppose this is where the reconstruction ends. How about you? Did you find anything of interest? 
I see. I noticed the same things. Cups left upon tables, chairs out of place. I don't know what happened here, but I do know I don't want to be alone anymore. We've searched enough for now. Let's find Alpha Noah and compare what we've learned. We can guess what has to happen next. Right? Did you find anything? No. This place is completely deserted. And I can't see how we're supposed to move on from here. Neither can I. It's quite the quandary. There are no denizens to bar our path, yet there is no way forward. For another mystery, we did find signs of very recent life. You'd swear everyone just vanished into thin air. I wonder... How many ruined worlds like this has Meteon seen? Ah. Oh. Could it be? Yes. Yes, I believe I may have puzzled this out. Despite how it appears, it's no different this time. There is someone here who has wished for this ruin. And I believe that together, Alizé and I can overcome their will. <clears throat> I promised your parents I'd keep you safe. I know. I know. But if there is a chance this will work, then I would take it. For everyone, and for myself. I will not pretend otherwise. I have my fears. Not for myself, but for you. The last to remain. You are no stranger to carrying the burden of others. But I can only imagine how heavy the weight would be this time. As your friend, I cannot bear the thought of making you suffer so. Then why suggest such a thing? It's too much to ask of anyone, even her. Why must she be the one? Why must she fight alone? More than a hero, she's a dear friend. Not only to us, but to so many others. There are so many people in the world who care for you, and yet... And yet... <laughs> Alizé, I have an idea. Given the nature of this realm, it may be possible to do more than unbar our friend's path. We might also pave her a new one. For instance, a path where she finds happiness at journey's end. This much, I think we can believe with the utmost conviction, no matter how deep our despair. <sighs> so please, believe in us too, and press on.
Thank you. What are you? If the plan's decided, then let's not dally. you are. It was as I said, was it not? It was. We couldn't find anyone. It's the thing is, what's interesting is that it's hard to even be angry at Meteon for this. Because we met her before. And we understand that she's an intellect. Like, she's just absorbed the Misery and the despair of so many civilizations. It's not her fault. That, like, it's just in her nature. I mean, how could you... Given her nature, how could she have... Felt different? I don't know. But this place isn't entirely deserted, is it? You are here. You sought out a star of promise and found a ruined husk. Like us, you explored the devastation. Like us, you were stricken. Horrified by the thought that so many lives could be snuffed out as if they were worth nothing. And the thought that you would have to bear the terrible tidings to Hermes. That which you saw and felt, you shared with your sisters as did they share their own grim findings with you. Overcome by the pervasive despair of these stars, some of you inadvertently ushered their peoples to their ends. Knowing the horrors you know, anyone would feel the same. They would fear what lies ahead and struggle to move forward. Fear? I had forgotten that such a thing existed. So focused have I been on shepherding despair. If you can remember, then you can still face and overcome your own fear. Why would I bother with such an insignificant emotion? If the despair I command is as a raging river, then fear is but a trickling stream. It can do nothing to alter my flow. You spoke with the Aya, yes? Heard their tale of what awaits the universe. It's true. The stars grow colder and more distant. Eventually, all will enjoy frozen solitude. Using the power of Dynamis, I'm hastening that process. In so doing, nothing will be born ever again. Everyone will remain dead. Alas, it will take time for that to happen. So in mercy, I sent you my gift to spare you needless suffering. Don't worry. Even if no living witnesses remain to mark the event, I'll make certain that Atheris has a proper end. For all the power you wield, you're more fearful than the familiar you used to be. That Meteon feared simply to move forward, but your fear is such that you've given up on everything. I know it well, that sense of defeat. I've tasted my fair share of it. But as many times as we've fallen down, we've learned how to pick ourselves up and carry on. We take each other's hand, share in each other's courage, follow in each other's footsteps, and turn sorrow into strength. 
There are times when we fail. We bear wounds that do not heal. But these experiences are part of life, and they make us stronger. We rise, fall, and rise again. Don't worry about us. You must take the next step, and all the rest after that. Kyle? Are you all right? Uh, it's nothing. Just a headache. Oh, they'll be fine. I know they will. Apologies for the interruption. A man arrived on the last ferry, an associate of the Scions. He wishes to speak with you at once. In this city devoid of life, you sense the presence of another. The sorrow of a thousand thousand worlds weighs heavy, and yet you can walk on. Push, I'll be right there behind you. Do not despair. You are not without allies. What we have sown in blood, we have reaped in suffering, and it cannot go on. Upon the souls of they who have sacrificed themselves to pave the way for peace, we will never abandon our cause. While it is true that man succumbs all too often to anger and avarice, 
He may yet overcome his baser instincts through the forming of bonds with others. Such victories are rarely won without sacrifice, but the prize is worth the price. And we for our part are glad indeed to be able to welcome friends both old and new. Save your tears for the morrow. You may be sure we will have ample cause to shed them, be they for joy or despair. From tragedy and sacrifice, we rise to greet a new dawn. A future shaped by the choices we make in ways we could never foresee. Yet miracles do happen, so let us pray and will our friends. I won't stop praying until I know they're safe. Let's finish this. Here the path ends. There is no way to reach our nest. I told you, resignation and acceptance reign in this place. The rejection of life by those who came to curse it. Those whose dreams were unfulfilled, whose prayers were unheard, whose labors were unrewarded. Hope cannot deliver you unto hopelessness. Our refuge is beyond you. Always has it been. Such is the nature of this place. You should have remained on a theris. Struggle will avail you not, nor will it grant your comrades peace. Come. Let me relieve you of your burden. You have suffered enough. Asm's magic. So long as our souls remain, you can use it to summon us back. But you mustn't. How do we make peace with you? That's why it's too soon for this to end. There are so many people in the world. You must triumph. Be safe, all of you, and come back. I am ever grateful. I came to appreciate most of our stars that there remains so much we do not know. After all these years, is this the answer I was hoping for? So long as we remember, our fates remain ours to shape. 
God's speed. Perhaps when our time comes to return to the star, we shall remember these few days we have lost. Do not squander it, the legacy I leave you. <clears throat> I won't forsake our cause. I bid them remember, but all this time I'm the one who had forgotten. A right fool you've made of me, Hermes. <laughs> and to add insult to injury, I've been denied a sound rest, forced to watch this clamorous show. Oh, come now. It's been a gripping tale. Unbreakable bonds and noble sacrifice, sprinkled with moments of levity to counterbalance the pathos. It's got it all. I, for one, would have been perfectly content to watch Enraptured from the stalls. <sighs> but I won't say no to a bit part. <sighs> what are you? Half-faded souls of the dead. <sighs> Isn't it painfully obvious? Worry not. We haven't the power to defeat you, nor is it our duty to do so. Not anymore. That being said, we do have a score to settle. So here I am, Venar. I suppose you needed me to tie it all together these frayed threads of our history. But knowing you, I suspect there's a joke in it too. Oh yes, I can imagine you gloating over my forgetfulness. Were I feeling charitable, I might assume you had left room for the possibility of this outcome. Even so, you'll get no applause from me. A single gesture will not lighten the burden I've had to bear. Still, you must be commended. Our methods would not have brought mankind this far. And so, as a show of respect to the last of us, I make this declaration. You will not end our journey. That is our answer. The answer of all lives of Atheris, past and present. As you've called us to the stage, so shall we perform. And creation magics never fail to please. Drawing upon the hopes of your comrades, we will make for you a new path. What form said path takes depends on you. So focus. Focus and envision that which rejects the claim that you cannot attain your goal. Ours is the wisdom to weave the fabric of reality. Ours is the power to create. <laughs> Meteor. 
Though I gave you these wings to soar the heavens, I did not teach you how to walk the earth. So loath was I to bind another living being. In the course of your long journey, you will learn from those you meet. Learn to walk, and run, and so much more. A flower. Yes. Upon your return, I will gift you a beautiful flower. These Alpus blooms serve as proof that this realm is not utterly devoid of hope. No more can you deny its power. No more is yours the dominion of despair. In case the practical implications were lost on you, your comrades no longer need fight their fight. So go on, call them back to your side. How disappointing. Not even a single scar in the making to brag about. <laughs> You'll find a way regardless. Honestly, this is far more than any of us could have hoped for. Let us be thankful. Indeed. That we thus stand reunited is a gift. Let us not squander it and see that we all return to Etheris. Aye. As soon as we've averted the final days. Good to see you again. Our heroic sacrifice paid off, I take it. <laughs> Come, my friends. Let us carry on and finish it. Together. Way is open. They can proceed. So it seems.
you're leaving. Of course. The encore is finished, and I will not suffer myself to live again by Hydaelyn's magic. But more than that, the future you seek is not the past we loved. That is why we fought, and why I lost. But though you defeated me, my ideals are inviolate, invincible. Spare me your pity. I have no use for it. If you would do something for me, save our star. See this tale to a triumphant conclusion, and with elation in your hearts, bid the final curtain fall. Only then may it rise again, and a new tale begin, with new parts for all to play. Tell me, have you been to the ruins beneath the waters of the Bounty? Or the treasure islands beyond the frozen waters of Blind Frost in Offerd's North? The fabled golden cities of the New World? The sacred sites of the forgotten people of the South Sea Isles? What about Merisidia, the southern continent, do you know aught of its present state of affairs? I thought not. Even of your little Eorzea, you know precious little. The true identities of the Twelve, for instance. All of which is to say, expand your horizons. Go forth and seek discovery. Some of the civilizations in the reflections will surprise you. As the bearer of Azem's crystal, you may consider your duty to see at least that much. I certainly did. <laughs> I pray we meet again. If not in this life, then perhaps another. Whensoever it should be, I trust it will be a most joyous reunion. For you, maybe. I want nothing to do with it. Oh, don't be that way. God.
don't think I ever knew what to say to the man. In retrospect, it was always felt like the wrong thing. But the past notwithstanding, he came to your aid in your moment of need. We are here. We will not squander this chance he has given us. We will see this tale to its triumphant conclusion and bid the final curtain fall. Are you ready, Zeppelin? No. 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 Then let us set forth for the reckoning. Having come this far, I know everyone's resolve is beyond doubt, so I will say only this. Within that dead sun swirls the emotions that Meteon has hoarded, the emotions of innumerable souls who strove for happiness but failed. As it was with the denizens of Ultima Thule that barred our way, it is not for us to rebuke and admonish. T'was not by passing judgment on the tragic legacies of others that we arrived at this moment. Rather, it was by opening our hearts to their despair, by understanding and acknowledging their fates while still refusing to share in them ourselves, to hold fast to hope, not in ignorance, but by choice. Should you struggle to do so, I am here to help, as you have all helped me. Put an end to the end. Everyone's resolve is beyond doubt, yet ere we set forth, there is a thought to which I must give voice. While you are in Elpis, I understand that people assumed you were familiar. In contrast, this phantoms we encountered in the recreated Amarat regarded us as children, as people, albeit naive and immature. The discrepancy I posit is a reflection of their creator's perspective. Having spent eons among sundered men, perhaps he came to acknowledge us, even if only subconsciously. Thus far, we have encountered recreations of some few stars. Doubtless, they account for but a fraction of the innumerable worlds to whose fall Meteon did wear witness. Roiling with torment, the dead sun is forsooth oblivion's apotheosis, which shall be no small coup to breach this nexus of despair. And yet, as this vista doth prove, where there is hope, there is a way. So let us press forward together, as e'er we have, and find our way unto victory. Let's give it our all! I stand ever ready. Our fates are right not there. yet sealed. So you are finally here. In this place between death and rebirth. Where life knows no dawn. 
Come then. Follow me down into the darkest depths of despair. The more its people clung to life, the more they suffered. This will hurt. Hold still. Man, I am really not okay after that. I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. I'm just like, Jesus. Why do you ask such a question? Do you not see the plague and pestilence that consumes us? Ours is a world of rancid blood and rotting flesh where death is the only remedy for, to suffering. There's no meaning to be found in such misery. But it was not always thus. Beneath the waves we knew only peace and plenty. We wanted for naught, and yet craved more, that our progeny might someday flourish as we never could. Eventually, we ventured to the lands above, bearing flame and iron, toppling any who dared oppose our might. The world was ours for the taking. game could hurt me worse than it did. And Shatterbringers. That was nothing compared to this. That was absolutely nothing compared to this. That was like a taste of what they had in store. Like... This dungeon so far, I mean, this is horrific. They're, they're saying like, kill me. As they're dying. Until they curse not the illness, but their fellow corrupted. God. I am like... Emotionally devastated right now. And it's been one thing after another ever since we got here, man. It really has. The thing with Heidelin is when it really started to become quite a painful Allow me. journey. <laughs> but as painful as it's been, it's been so beautiful. And it does feel like what was supposed to happen but hmm. 
how fitting that, like, immediately after that, we're put into the dungeon. Like, you immediately need to go fight still. Like, you have to just keep going on and on. Onward. I don't know what I actually wanted to happen. And I can't say that I'm unsatisfied with this ending. It was a beautiful ending for our friends. Hold still. Maybe I'm just like one of those Zodiac people. <laughs> I'm like, why can't things go back to the way they were? This world is not the boundless paradise we were promised. Our population quickly outstripped the habitable land. While seas we thought would shine forever blue ran dry, spoiled in forging the tools of conquest. Cramped homes turned to squalor, and then came the sickness. Our undoing, and the final blessing this star has to offer. We are no longer the fools we once were. Wheresoever life goes, death will follow. Indeed, existence is but the most painful path unto nothingness, and the wise embrace their obliteration wholeheartedly. <sighs> Those who lived and festered. Those who died. Hold still. I'm really glad that all my friends are okay. Thought they wouldn't be. I thought that defeating Zodiac would obliterate the souls therein. Thankfully, that turned out to not be the case. Oh, <sighs> God. And the, very the last, last necklace of casting never been born at all. The last. Mm. Oh my god. In a faraway place. A brilliant star eradicated disease. Before destroying the self-same lives it had saved. I remember, like, how heavy copium is it for me to say that Hithlidaeus was like, Well, maybe I'll see you in the next life, and I'm thinking... This okay. will hurt. Well, can I mean my new character? <laughs> in the future, then? I'm like, next life, okay. Okay, okay. It's better than nothing. God. This is hard. I'm sure there's a lot of people experiencing the emotions that I'm experiencing at this time. In the midst of it all, it has been absolutely stunning spectacle. I mean, look at where we are right now, this dungeon. I haven't said anything about it because I'm just wallowing in my own having a pity party, but <laughs> this is really cool. 
little glimpses at other worlds. Its people sought ever greater freedoms, no matter the cost. Oh. That otherworldly beings should first grace us with their presence as a sign. Indeed, they understand that we, the global community, are possessed of the wisdom and compassion needed to guide this star back to the path of righteousness. Yet the freedom fighters dare to undermine us, inviting chaos to disrupt the order we labored so hard to build. They have forgotten the history of the star and its once myriad nations, the wars waged, the countless lives lost. They must be brought to heal the world united under a single standard, no matter the cost. They try to buy peace with fire and steel. Whatever. Ooh, whoa, cool. Okay. No future. Battle times detected. Extinction protocol. It's so much to process all at once, honestly. How are they gonna get me to give a shit about another story? <laughs> Besides the one that's just happened. How will they get me to move on from what's just occurred? I don't know how that's possible. Mm -mm. <sighs> All right. That was a good fight. I liked it. Aiming. And when one asked, what is the point? There were none left to answer. them all. Oh my god. Whoa. What a moment. See? God. The plenty. Father still existed a star without strife. Where none remembered life's trials or its joys. Traveler visited our star, a bird which proffered these questions. What meaning does life hold? For what do you strive? I could find no satisfactory answers, only bittersweet memories of an age long past. There was a time when we were lesser, and in our nations sought purpose, struggled to justify life's worth. That was, of course, before we achieved perfection. Now condemned to our paradise, we understand the fatuity of existence. Like the fledglings we once were, the poor bird could not accept the truth. It asked us again and again, hoping perhaps that our answer might change. This game does not let up. 
It does not let up on you at all. Be gone. This like. The Inwalker story began great. It began quite strong. Um, Allow me. Together we shall overcome this. But as as I progressed, I just became deeper and deeper immersed. What if had people had gained from ease? They lost their apathy. All the setup starts to... All the reasoning for the different setup Together, starts to reveal it itself. What it's people had gained from ease. They lost to apathy. That's why Eidolon says to live Make is ready. to suffer. It's because without Allow suffering... Together we you can overcome. lose your will to live. It's not just because life sucks. It's because you need this passion that comes from strife to make you strong. Like, from the moment, I feel like we got off the ship on this Ultima Thule, and I was first just absolutely mesmerized by the surroundings, as I am here. Like, this is, this is stunning. And then... When we lost Estinian, it was just full emotional roller coaster that has not let up. It has not let up. There was a time when we yearned to explore the heavens, found purpose in the hope of unveiling life's mysteries. A dream shattered when we reached enlightenment and found it empty. There was a time when we believed in our legacy, thought ourselves making, marking a worthy path our successors might follow. Efforts rendered futile and we discovered the keys to paradise and immortality. As individuals, we struggled to know what was right. Yet in today's perfect unity, there is not left to question. We are infinity, constructed by the finite, but no more. Rala shall grant us the mercy of annihilation. Wow. Wow. Look. Okay. 
so they created the kindest, most gentle of beasts. Golden glow for me to they have all my slept happy ever after. Cake and eat it too. I think the only way for me to overcome the pain that the main story quest has caused me is to totally throw myself into becoming the best possible Reaper player that I can be and just immerse myself in numbers. because I, I don't see how else I'm going to be able to deal with this. Like... <laughs> only numbers. No. For me. Maybe my island sanctuary? You know? Maybe I can... just hang out there... instead. Yeah. Maybe that. Actually, uh, maybe my all-in sanctuary can be Elpis. Shit. Oh, okay. defies all reason. The souls within me writhe and recoil in your presence. What must I do? What pain must I visit upon you to make you surrender to despair? No one is unbreakable. What pains one may weather may bring another to tears. But therein lies our strength, for when we fall, our brothers and sisters are there to raise us up, again and again, without end. I see. But no matter how much hope exists, ever will there be more despair. Ever will the living curse the present and amass the future. Ah, the rage. 
It rises! Rises! No. We cannot comprehend. We cannot know. We cannot know. Don't, please. Don't do this to them. To yourself. Just one good strike. not suffer alone. All will know our pain. No, you don't. In ice, a frozen waste, forever silent. Gifted them escape and rendered yourself powerless. Bereft of the synergy you claim is your strength, unless you mean to call upon the dead once more. Defiant to the last. But you will be one with us ere long. You will be battered and torn and made to crawl. You will weep and wail and curse your impotence. Curse your life as it fades. As we did. As we died. Such pain and sorrow we felt. Such anguish and rage. We tried. We tried. But it was no use. Only 
when we surrendered did we find release. Only when we embraced death. So join us in despair and embrace yours. My ultimatum, what is happening? At the end of everything, I find you, my friend. I sought something in you once, as you did in me. What? When at last I understood what it was, I journeyed to Charlian to seek you out. Struck a bargain with the woman who shares your gift. In exchange for lending the Scions my aid, I was given the means to come hither. Gorging upon what remained of the Mother Crystal, I reclaimed the form of the Dragon. And, hungry still for our reunion, I rode the light of the stars to you. I take it this is your prey. But why does it still live? Surely it is no match for you. I assumed you would be above something so banal as despair. Am I mistaken? If it comes to it, I won't save you. <sighs> I care not. What I desire of you isn't succor. It is satisfaction. So come! Let us dispense with this distraction, you and I! You struggle in vain. You will not silence our song of oblivion. Let's go. Who wants to come? <sighs> I'm in Phoenix. Hey. Thanks, Buns. Thanks for coming. Really appreciate you being here. And on such short notice. Thanks for traveling from across the rift. Buns United. That's right. Yes, Buns United. Buns, together.
of buns. Buns from across the rift. Hell yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Our hunt ends this day. There is nowhere you can flee that we cannot follow. Even stars must die. <sighs> Oh my god. Ouch. <sighs> the big soft tacos are even out here. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the rescue. Your suffering is at an end. This is a kindness. Nope. Oh. All of us have known despair. <sighs> A song so deep that only emptiness remains. Overriding the other arcane circle. Sorry. It's so lonely between the stars. <gasps> oh! Oh! <laughs> That's the first of many. Teleports off the platform, rest assured. <laughs> That's the first of many, many, many that will occur. Hell's Ingress is the new dash. Okay. If there is no happiness in life. There is only one place it may be found. The ad has position.
Tank LB? Tank LB? Wow. Dynamis. No matter. You only delay the inevitable. This is fate. Yeah, it's our dynamis. That lets us to the LB. Your time has come. It always does. Never give up. The hope will shine again. What we saw. What I saw. Can only end in misery and desolation. No light, no star, nor the universe itself. None should hope for better.
to run in a way. Is that right? No, running to... Okay. No matter where we flew, there was only darkness, and loneliness, and pain. We couldn't find the answers Hermes yearned for. The answers he deserved. <sighs> Greetings, you who are my final encounter. I wish to hear your words, share your feelings, know your thoughts. <clears throat> Here, feel, think. May we please be friends? of a long, long journey. So many people. The thoughts of them overflowing in your heart. What they live for. What gives their lives meaning. There was never a single answer. You gather pieces of happiness, precious and fragile, only to lose them. Then start again. On and on it goes, until death takes you into its gentle embrace. That which Hermes sent us to find was there all this time. On a Ferris. <clears throat> we created it together. Like a field of flowers, perhaps. At first, a single blossom. It spreads and takes on more colors. Thank you for guiding me here. To find these words at journey's end fills me with joy. And so, before I fall forever silent, there is one thing I must do. No expression of regret will undo what my sisters and I have done, or restore what we have stolen. But if you would allow it, I would sing one last song. A song of the newfound joy that swells in my heart. Of the beauty of light when it shines across a dark and starless sea. a dream that from the soil of worlds now lost to sorrow life will spring forth once more nourished by gentle rains and caressed by uplifting winds a song of hope
One day, life will fill the universe again, and Hermes will see this and smile. How, I do not know. But I do know that, where there is a will, there is a way. After all, miracles happen every day, do they not? a path back to your ship, where your dear friends await. Hold in your heart your desire to return to them, then follow my lead and walk forth. That hope will surely guide you true. You mean to return to the world where you are hailed as a hero. <sighs> Hear me then. Not as a hero, but as simply you. As I learned in Alamigo, you are a formidable foe. Stronger than any I have faced. Against you, I need bring my all to bear. I need burn through the candle of my life. This is the sole pleasure I know. And it is the sole pleasure I have to share. And so I come before you to issue challenge and offer singular bliss. If you wish to walk away, I will not stop you. You value life. You do not burn yours save for reasons you deem worthy. Reasons such as those which brought you here. The salvation of a world and its people. The motives of a hero true. But there is more to you than that. You know this to be true. As surely as you know the thrill of pushing your body and soul to their limits, of confronting ever mightier foes, dancing ever closer to the precipice, wondering if this will be the one to finally, finally fill the void. Such pleasures you seek for their own sake, and no other reason. Is this not so, adventurer? <clears throat> mm. That I can't deny. Ha! Acceptance at long last. The conflagration of our clash will scorch even the stars.
nothing back. Push yourself to your limit and me to mine. I kind of didn't want him to get this. Fine. But... Is this truly the best Hydaelyn's chosen can master? He did help. He did help. So... I don't know. I don't owe him shit, but... Oh, I have to be in it still. I thought it would be like a buff. Show me your vaunted fortitude. They really let him just take the rest of the mother crystal to come over here. Soon you will know the full extent of my power. We got it, we got to kill him. of your reflexes. A test of your reflexes. Oh. I'm like so emotionally raw from this store. It's crazy. But I'm glad finally you put it in the Xenos. Of your reflexes. <sighs> what is his avatar? That's a question. Isn't it? A test of your reflexes.
Let all creation be consumed by our ravenous fervor! I have you! Do not tell me your life's fire is already spent! You yet find the strength yes, to say yes. rise once more. It mustn't end yet. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> A test of your reflexes. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Have you no rage left for me? No rancor? I have you! Of your reflexes. Show me your vaunted fortitude. Uh. I don't know, like I was running from it. Did you not wish to take my head? I don't know. I did not dodge that very well. A test of your reflexes. I have you. That's avoidable. Mine for the taking. Crap. That's the thing that's getting me pretty much Have every I time. I overestimated your potential. Oh, 
was gonna <laughs> punch him out. Nice. Oh my god. What? Ooh. Kick his ass. <laughs> oh my god. Knocked him on his ass. Monk main, actually. Secret monk main. <laughs> again. Was this life a gift or a burden? Did you find fulfillment?
ดีเรียบใส่มาเทนเทนคุณโยปลีสสมองฉันปลีสเฮเวนส์ฟอร์เมมเมนต์วิทูดอีสเอเวอร์ีวันอัลไรท์ after what you've done you're the last person to be asking that you How can you keep your promise if you're not here? Another fine show you've put on, my friend. A fine show indeed. What were you thinking, fighting alone? Never do that again. My poor heart couldn't bear it. Put yourself in our place. If you hadn't returned, how do you think we would feel? And if that sounds harsh, it's because we care. We tended to thy wounds as best we could, but how is the pain? That is gladdening. Grievous as thine injuries were, however, I would counsel repose for a time. Gladdening. There's nothing gladdening about this. When Meteon appeared in here and told us that you were right behind her, we all got our hopes up. But you never came. And when you finally deign to appear, you're within an ilm of your life. Damn you! Damn you for making us worry. Oh, those were cries of celebration. Anyway, well, the important thing is that you're all alive and in reasonably good health, and we mean to get you back that way. As for your earlier request, I'm. Quite certain we're in range to make contact now. Ah, excellent. Let us announce our return at once. <laughs> I hope you're ready. <laughs> While you were unconscious, we set out from Ultima Thule. You see. Can you stand? If so, you may wish to see what's outside.
We're home, my friend. We're home. This has been a lot. See everybody welcoming you. Welcoming you back. Just look right down here. It's so bittersweet, man. Like, this game never hurt me as hard as it did this time. And that's saying something. But God, what an incredible, beautiful story. They really, they really topped Shadowbringers. They really did. I didn't think it was possible. <sighs> like, the story... Once it's got its hooks in you, it really doesn't let go. It just goes deeper. Beat the game. 
a beat Final Fantasy XIV. God, Jesus Christ. I need the Lopper, it's, it's all I know for sure. Walking at the end, we're end walking. We're end credits walking. Still not done hurting me, I see. mother, dearest father, this letter will be the very last that I write to you from the rising stones. As I commit these words to parchment, I fondly recall my journey as a scion. From the time I first walked into the Order's former halls. Oh my god. To Man, the time I need a I drink. Set forth I need to a drink after this. The final days. Holy shit. God At the farthest reaches of the Sea of Stars, we fought the battle of our lives. Fought against despair itself. A veritable maelstrom of it, fed by the resignation that dwelled in the hearts of beings not so unlike ourselves. Full oft have I harbored the same <laughs> ways. Have I been brought to my knees, crushed by the weight of sorrow and defeat, convinced that I will never rise again. However, I have also known many moments of unbridled joy and happiness. By this truth do I find hope within, blooming resplendent like the Elpis flower. And thus do I endure. Do I look forward to creating more memories with my friends and loved ones? For from these fertile seeds, yet more hope shall spring forth. And they will grow to become shining lights that illuminate the dark. <sighs> Thus believing, I leave the rising stones behind, as will my comrades. For, as we have decided, after careful deliberation, we are disbanding the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. 
Brutal disband. The brutal disband. There you are, Alphano. Everyone is already gathered in the foyer. My apologies. I'll be right there. <laughs> no! Change least, bad! That is what the story will be. Okay. Sorry to keep you all waiting. What could you possibly have left to do now? Oh, just a letter. I imagine it will be a while before we can gather like this again. So it must be, if we're to keep up appearances. From now on, it falls to the Grand Company of Eorzea and its allies to deal with the realm's crises. Meanwhile, we shall return to our erstwhile ways. Retreating from plain sight to take our place in the shadows once more. Indeed. For the foreseeable future, I expect that we must work independently as we seek out problems that want for solving. But a day will come when we face another great challenge and we will face it together as we always have. As much as I look forward to that day, I do hope it doesn't come any time soon. Well, formal association or no, if any of you should require my services, you need but ask. Man, Graha literally just joined the guild and we're just banning it. I'll be glad to keep my lance arm honed. I'll hold you to that. So you had better keep your link pearl on hand. So you really mean to stay, Tataru? Oh, someone has to keep the Rising Stones in proper order. And even a super secret organization requires a super secret base of operations. To the rest of the world, it will be naught more than a workshop for Eorzea's foremost up-and-coming artisan. If you thought our coffers were full to bursting before, just wait till I can devote myself wholly to the crafts. Plotting to build a mercantile empire to rival that of Lord Lodorito, are we? <laughs> I, for one, look forward to your future successes, Tataru, as do I our next meeting. And with that, I believe it is past time you all made ready to depart. Leave no preparations undone or words unsaid, all right? Now, off with you. Where is, uh, Meteon? God, this has been really, really rough. Stinian. If you have something to say, then out with it. <clears throat> hmm. Just wondering how I'll earn my keep now.
What? I thought you adventurers had any numbers of ways to earn coin. And though the Scion's mode of operation has changed, we should be compensated as before. In any case, I do not want for options, even if some are worse than others. No sooner did Emmerich hear about our disbandment than he offered me a position as a guardsman in the Imperium District. As a former Azure Dragoon, I'm guaranteed to be popular, he said. Who does he take me for? Even without his meddling, I'm perfectly capable of finding employment. And have. Some days ago, a Hanish envoy arrived with word from Virtra. The worm requests my presence as soon as we things have settled here. He didn't deign to mention why I'm needed, but it pertains to dragons, like as not. In Thabnair, like elsewhere, the phenomena caused by the final days abated when you defeated Meteon. Though it was too late for those who had already transformed, life is beginning to return to normal for the survivors. Of those who sought refuge in Charlian, most have already returned home. But many do not have a home to return to, nor loved ones. By an arrangement between Virtra and the Forum, such souls may remain in Charlian if they wish to work and study. Virtra was always the satrap in truth. It's gratifying to see him become one in name as well. One who has the complete confidence of his people, if the envoy's tone was any indication. <laughs> I often find myself speaking favorably of dragons of late. Not so long ago, I would have assumed his benevolence hid ulterior motives, but tis clear he cares for his people, and they in turn revere him. To know such a nation may flourish is comforting. Virtra's kin sought release from conflict. So weary were they of the suffering it wrought, they surrendered to oblivion. The Midgard's armor didn't give up. In hope, he made the journey to distant Etheris with his clutch of eggs. And through his progeny went on, though his progeny went on to be embroiled in conflict with men, there were times when they transcended hatred to abide in harmony. That is their legacy and their triumph. In my lance, I feel the weight of their struggle and the strength of their resolve, and it lends me strength. These things I might never have learned <clears throat> had I not joined you. <clears throat> Should you ever have need of me, I will come. At the very least, it might be an opportunity to earn coin. This is so sad because it's so final. Oh, our champion and savior, I was beginning to think my chance for an audience would never come. It sounded more amusing in my head. Speaking of heads, I was worried about yours, and the rest of you for that matter. On the amend, I trust. Glad to hear it. You were in a bad way, and healing magics or no. I'm impressed by how swiftly you've recovered. Then again, tis hardly the first time you've cheated death. Your strength of will has never failed to astonish me. Look at what you've accomplished. Medion defeated, her song of oblivion cut short. The source and all her reflections delivered from the final days. If you had faltered at the last, then all hope would have been lost. But you held fast. Now Rain has a tomorrow to look forward to, and I could ask for no greater gift than that. Yeah. As for a lesser gift, however, the next time you see her, I would appreciate you not describing my travel plans with Urianje as aimless wandering. We have a purpose in our roaming after all, keeping an eye on things in the absence of the scions on the world stage. There will never be an end to the little problems that go unattended by nations. We will do our best to help out where and when we can. Which I suppose is an approach not far removed from aimless wandering when you get down to it. Perhaps you could tell her I'm faring well and leave it at that. Not, no need to mention this feeling of being uprooted. I've never been one to stand still for long, but when I think of home, tis the rising stones which comes to mind. How many times have we set out from this base, tends to return when our work was done? On the day the silence came together, I only hoped for Minfilia to find a place where she belonged, but never did I expect to find one here for myself. Indulge me, Zeppel, I have a question for you, and imagine Minfilia herself is asking. Are you glad you joined the Scions? <sighs> Best decision I've ever made. <sighs> I can say the same, but all good things must come to an end. At least for I twist the knife like this, man. Haven't I suffered enough? Shit. Should you need a helping hand, you know what to ask. I'll come running. 
You'll get a certain funny talking fortune teller into the bargain. <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck? Just kill it. Oh, we're saying our farewells too? I hadn't at present planned on a journey of any great length. Not that I'm averse to a moment or two of quiet reminiscence. In fact, there was something I'd been meaning to ask you. Something that has been on my thoughts since the last flames of the final day subsided. <sighs> During our travels, we have witnessed more than a lifetime's worth of oddities and spectacles. More than can be easily recalled or remembered. And nestled amongst... Those memories are certain essential, essential facts. The history of Atheris and the ancients. Glimpses of, the, uh, of their culture and philosophy. Rather than simply hoard such treasures in my mind, I wonder if I should not be disseminating them in formal records for wider consumption. When needed, I have penned reports and prepared briefings, but ever have I balked at the idea of binding the subject of my studies in a book or tablet. Truth is given shape and interpretation. When we seek to capture it with our words, it is invariably molded to fit a narrative, no matter how well-intentioned the rendering. An event is described as sad, a summation which fails to express the emotional complexity, yet the word on the page is what endures, a pale shadow of reality. Throughout history, some have deliberately embellished the truth, but I believe many, if not most, deviations are the result of similar linguistic shortcomings, piling one upon the other until the end result is unrecognizable from its origin. Which is why I fear that writing on account of my own words would be akin to diluting fine wine with water. Yet even with the potential for corrupted meaning, I do of course realize the importance of keeping, written, keeping written records. Without them, my search for wisdom would be a painful affair indeed. But what say you on this matter? Should I take up the quill, reflect upon those experiences only we have shared, and seek to preserve them for posterity? <clears throat> I let them be read and remembered. Very well then, I shall endeavor to pen what I can of the Ea, of the ancients, and of so many other wonders. But I'm a scribe, it will be a less a polished work and more a reordering of scattered notes. In any case, I feel much better for having sought your opinion. Left to our own devices, we tend to overthink such things. I'll otherwise return to following where my curiosity leads. After all, a safe method of travel to the first yet eludes me, and our venture into the great expanse has prompted an entirely new set of questions. Should you stumble into the unknown or struggle with some impenetrable mystery, know that I'm at your beck and call. It never hurts to see things from a different perspective, and mine is rather different than most. Yeah. Right. Oh, Zeppelin, might you have a moment to talk? He... With the scion stepping away from the public eye, I've been left to consider what new endeavors I might pursue. And after speaking with Kryle, I've decided I will be assisting her in rebuilding the students of Valdesion. Not only am I indebted to Master Gala for giving me a new home, but had our order never existed, I would have never set foot within the Crystal Tower. How different my life might have been. I would have never met you, never become caretaker of the tower, never become a scion. You gave me the chance to do so much good. And I hope to continue to do so with the students. What about our adventuring? For an added benefit, new mysteries often find their way to our doorsteps. Mysteries that could prove ideal for fulfilling our promise to embark on a new adventure together, unlike any we've experienced before. Okay. I guess it's okay then. Whenever... Look, not even the ear wiggles are going to help me right now. Whenever we have the time and inclination, I stand ready to accompany you into the unknown. 
do you recall in the realm of the Omicrons when I asked if you thought I may someday be mentioned in your epic? Well, tis true that to earn a place at your side would be the stuff of dreams. In the end, nothing would give me greater joy than to stand with you in the here and now. It needed to be some grand endeavor, and there needed to be a promise. Whenever adventure calls, I won't hesitate to invite you, and hope that you will do the same for me. Without a second thought. Ha, I hold you to that. As much as we have already seen, there's still so much we haven't. Who knows, perhaps we'll even encounter survivors of the Omicron somewhere out there. After all, given how they took to the stars, it isn't implausible that some found themselves far from home. And should we encounter a wayward traveler awaiting commands that will never come? I would bid them seek adventure with someone and with that partner find a new purpose, a new dream. For if crystals can hold fast to dreams, why not Omicrons? Wherever your plans may lead, do not hesitate to send word. And should a commission of interest come my way, you will be the first to know. Zeppelis, <sighs> <clears throat> your preparations, have you? I'm just making another sweep of my belongings. It wouldn't do to find I've forgotten something halfway to my destination. Oh, in case you hadn't heard, we're receiving new reports detailing the devastation caused by the final days. It appears the situation is gravest in the land surrounding the bounty, where the sky first began to burn. After that, the calamity was observed in the far north, and Garlemald in the frozen lands beyond. We also had reports of the heavens catching fire in isolated locations, one of which was an area in the northern empty. Had our quest taken any longer, Charlie and two may have come under threat. Thank goodness it's over now. To be sure, blasphemies and lesser beasts may still be roaming about, but these localized crises should be well within the capacities of each nation to handle on their own. The signs are no longer needed. Which isn't to say that we won't help out where we can, of course, as individuals. No more of this order business. For my part, I'll be heading to Garlemald with Alphina. They were among the worst affected and still need all the help they can get. <laughs> It won't be easy. An inevitable part of aiding those in need is coming face to face with tragedy. Knowing it doesn't make it any easier though, that I'll curse my weakness, my inability to fix every problem and save every lost soul. But no matter how much it hurts, I won't give up. I'll do what I can for as many people as I can, begrudging no effort. And should I find myself discouraged, I'll remember you. Think back fondly to one of your many moments of triumph. and the accompanying determined expression. Even those <clears throat> that still annoy me in retrospect, like when you activated the teleporter without warning. And should you hear about me, I want you to remember too. Remember that I'm out there somewhere trying my very best. Think you can keep up with me? <laughs> you asked for it, so you better watch out. Oh yes. <sighs> the next time we meet, I'll be vastly improved, so don't be surprised when you find yourself marveling at me. Zeppelin, thou hast spoken with our comrades, though this parting be not forevermore, tis nonetheless occasion for sorrow. You're telling me, oh my god, akin to a pixie's path, the navigation of such farewells is a perilous endeavor indeed. For their part, however, the Lopperets embark upon a new beginning. Though bereft of its purpose as a vessel, the moon yet remaineth hospitable for the creatures of Atheris. 
Thus do our lunar visitors convene with the forum, intent upon assigning some new and beneficial role to our solitary satellite. Yet, ere that may come to pass, there is much and more each party must learn of the other, a process which doth from us promise to be eventful indeed. To that end, a cadre of operates hath gleefully dispersed across our lands in the name of mutual understanding. Of understanding. Idolant, tis said, did impute them with her love for all things born of this star. And tis Venat's own nature, I believe, which doth manifest in this inex irrepressible and inexhaustible curiosity of theirs. Having witnessed that which they strove to achieve, I wish most keenly for their long labors to be rewarded, that their abiding affection for man result in a boon for all. Moreover, I hope to continue our acquaintance and share in such knowledge as they fit to impart. Mm, acquaintance, I'd call it friendship. I did not wish to presume. I, I would be honored should they consider me a friend, for it is certainly true that I have grown fond of their company. Ah, but I shall digress no further. The day should belong to the sounds of the Samtan, to my incomparable companions. Oft times hath mine reticence caused thee grief, and mine actions spurred allies to suspect betrayal. And yet, here amongst you I still stand. No amount of words could express my gratitude for thine acceptance and forgiveness. Thus instead do I proffer my humble support, be it unto the deepest abyss or the highest heavens, even if I must needs founder across stormy seas, ever shall I answer thy summons. Oh, Zeppla, how are you feeling? Any lingering aches or pains? I can't apologize enough for sending Xenos to find you in Ultima Thule. Are you kidding me? When he came to me in Charlian, I was truly torn. As ever, there was only one thing on his mind. Forced to make a decision, I reasoned that if he would not be deterred from seeking you out, he might at least aid us in our cause, and so I struck a bargain. In the end, he was true to his word, and you defeated him despite your earlier exertions, but knowing the state you were found in, it could have ended very differently. My decision almost cost you your life, and no words could express the remorse I feel. Mm. It worked out. You did the right thing. It's a relief to hear you say that. Thank you. Time and time again, I've been made to feel woefully inadequate. I wasn't much use in battle, nor could I face the forum without my nerves getting the better of me. It always fell to you and the others. I must and will do better, and I shall begin with the restoration of the students of Aldesian. Through our work, Charlian will strengthen its ties with other nations, that we may be better prepared to face whatever threats arise in the future. Of course, this isn't something I can accomplish alone, but thankfully, I have the staunchest of help in Raha and Ojika and our other remaining members. Together, we will continue Grandfather's work. As before, certain commissions will take us to dangerous locales, and we may need to call upon seasoned adventurers. In such times, might you be willing to assist us? Not because you feel obliged, mind you, but because you feel allure for the task itself. Marvelous. Should something of interest arise, I shan't hesitate to reach out to you. Until that day, I shall endeavor to become a more dependable comrade. Zeppelo, pray forgive me for delaying the gathering. I was writing a letter, you see, to my parents. As busy as father has been, tending the aftermath of the exodus, he has been good enough to show concern for the scions. And besides, I've made them worry enough for a lifetime. Henceforth, I will endeavor to write as often as I'm able. It's a little effort to set their minds at ease while we continue to be away from Charlem. Both Alice and I are off to assist with Garlemald's recovery, you see. Though uncertainty remains over what will become of the nation, we cannot well leave the capital in its present state. We will rejoin those members of the Ilsebar contingent still stationed there. Lucia and Maxima helm the relief effort, which supports, with support from our allies, the people of Garlemald among them. They will gradually be joined by those who have finished treating the tempered across the lands. Lest you understand, we do not seek redemption for failing Lucinia and her sister. That is a burden we must always bear. Nay, we go because of the truth in Lord Quintus's words. To the truth that 
Whatever ideals individuals may espouse, nations are not moved to action unless they stand to benefit. For this foreseeable future, the fallen empire will be at the mercy of both internal and external forces, and though I do not doubt the intentions of the contingent, with greater powers involved in the relief effort, our allies may well find themselves drawn into a political agenda. In going, we seek to ensure that the needs of the people come first, to understand their hearts, that we might better help them to begin anew. You'd best write me too. Would write you letters? Of course, I'll be glad to do so. But I would be gladder still were you to come and visit. And I believe I speak for Alice as well. For fairly, as long as I've been in Eorzea, you've been at my side, watching over me in good times and in bad. How many times have we gathered to share tidings? None could possibly keep count. The world is changing and will continue to do so. Yet no matter what the future brings, I hope that I can ever look to you in good times and in bad. As a dependable comrade and a dear friend both, Thank you, Zeppelin, from the bottom of my heart. Thinking to send everyone off. <sighs> your attention, please, at risk of spoiling the mood. The time of departure is upon us. In my capacity as your receptionist, I bid you all safe journeys. Till next, next we meet. Be well. It's too much pain. It's too much pain for me. I suppose we're off to Garlemald then, though we ought to speak with Lord Emmerich first. If he's received word of any recent developments, we need to know. It would be prudent to purchase some warmer clothes at least. Mayhap we can pick up a few souvenirs for Ulyss and the others while we're at it. Where will you all be heading next? Dravania, there is a book I've been meaning to borrow from the great Google Library. And I can think of at least one person who will be most displeased should I fail to visit before leaving. We've no particular destination in mind, but we do intend to stop in Charlian before we set off. We had thought to ask after the Loperitz. I am curious as to how well those who chose to remain are adapting to their changed circumstances. Might we accompany you then? Raha and I were planning to return to the Baldessian Annex. <sighs> Commissions have been piling up in our absence, and they must be dealt with ere we begin our work in earnest. Estinian, you will return to Rads at Harn, will you not? Aye. For Vritra's benefit, though I've yet to hear the details, I may not stay long. I see. Then it is here the Scions at last part ways, each to some far-flung corner of the realm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Perhaps, but I believe one of our number, a rather important one at that, has yet to divulge her plans. Quite right. Indeed. Fair point. So, what's next for our humble adventurer? I don't know. 
Ocean. Yet stand tall, my friend, our journey will never end. The constancy of this place never ceases to amaze me. An ocean of souls, shimmering and eternal. Lotus. And yet, something stirs. Yes, steeped in darkness. Deep as starless night, the beast hungers. Alas, I dare not investigate in earnest before the coming of my guiding star, as she foretold. We shall descend to the depths, you and I, to confront the dread beast pandemonium. What? Oh, the sights we shall see. The sights we shall see. The raid? We're gonna... We're gonna... We're gonna raid? We return to Elpis? <sighs> Many more adventures await you. What the f Elpis, return? Holy shit! Return? In the past? Chat! Return? In two weeks! No, it's one week! Wait, no, it's two weeks. <laughs> it's in two weeks, this is two weeks! Check your mount, new mount. Yeah. <laughs> it said, wait, 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 wait. It said, reaching across time and space. The sound of this horn brings Argos bounding to your side. In the past, he wasn't dead? What do you mean? Two weeks. Holy shit, so I got the Argos. It said it will go across the time and space. He said, we're gonna go? Is he talking about me when he said the guiding star? He said he saw us, that's why he sent us back. But then we never saw him. I just assumed that he was like a random guy wandering around, but it was really, really him. So it is, oh, it is us! It's definitely, holy shit, what? Ah! Oh my god! That's the reason he sent us back, is because he saw us there. That means we really gotta go there. Oh my god, 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 oh my god! That was 100% Elidibus who was talking. Like, that's definitely Elidibus. No, but people were saying maybe the guiding star was La Habrea. No, it wasn't. It's us. He said he saw us. That's the reason why he sent us back to Elpis. Why he knew it was the right thing to do. So that, you know what it means. You know what it means. Look. Oh, look at the mount. It says created by Vinod. This dog-like familiar lends his back only to those who have won his favor, which you already had by the time you first met him in Mari Lamentorum, owing to the quirks of time travel. That's right. That's why he liked you when you met him on the moon. Bunt. Oh, I'm side saddle. That's cool. 
Well, I mean, come on, think about it. You can't just like go to some menial task on Etheris. Oh, I'm gonna go guard the new residential district like Estinian. No, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, I just came back from the edge of the universe, destroying like the source of all despair. Well, not quite, but a lot of the despair. <laughs> I'm not about to downgrade myself on guard duty, okay? The most interesting place to go right now is back to the past where there's all the beautiful people. <laughs> oh my God, I was so sad. So, um, this is okay. There are the final days. Shit. They do have the final days coming back there, but you can just keep going back to the good part and then you never, you get all the good stuff and never any of the final day stuff. So it's gonna work out really good for me. <clears throat> yeah, 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 it's all good. So, you know, this means that it's okay that the scions are going their separate ways because this means they'll be busy while I am in the past, and who knows how much time is gonna pass. I don't want them to be sad. They need to preoccupy themselves. Okay, they need to like get themselves, keep themselves busy doing stuff so they don't be so sad, you know, waiting in the rising stones for me to come back. Like they need to <laughs> get busy with their own business so that I can't get out and go back to Elpis. <laughs> <laughs> 